Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for December 2nd of 2013. It is 7.15, and we are ready to get going. I just want to remind everyone that these meetings are recorded uh, by ACMI and by other people who are reporting, so this uh, is a recorded event. First up is consent agenda, and the consent agenda consists of minutes of the November 18th, 2013 meeting. We have reappointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals of Pamela Heidel, a term to expire 10-2014. Cable Advisory Committee of John Marr and Joseph Weath, I apologize if I mispronounced, uh, to expire on May of 2016. And Michael Quinn time, uh, to expire in October of 16. We have the appointment of the new uh, two new election workers, John Ackerley of Edge Hill Road and Kelly Mullen of Winslow Street. And we have a request for a beer and wine license. I'm actually going to pull that off the consent agenda and talk about that separately. So uh, if I could have a Move motion. approval on A, B, and C. Is there a second? second? Any further discussion? Any of those people here who wish to discuss their reappointments? I'm not recognizing anyone. OK, all those. Oh, no, yeah, oh, yeah. oh Pam, I apologize. I don't, I don't need to discuss it. I just you know, want to thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve on the CBA. So. Thank you very much for your for your contribution. I apologize. We've spoken on the phone, but I'm not sure we've ever met in person. And, yeah. uh, we thank you very much as well. Do I understand you're the new chair? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. So it should be interesting. Excellent. Yes. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, 5-0 on, on A through C. So item D, um, we have a proposal from the Bishop PTO, and there's two different parts to this. There's an afternoon and an evening event um, on December 6th, and I know that there's been some back and forth uh, in particular about the afternoon event and whether or not it was appropriate. And so I don't know if there's someone from Bishop who wants to talk about the event or if we want to start with a motion or where they, do they had actually contacted us and said they were unable to be present. And okay. there was a letter that was um, sent to the That's members right. of the yeah. board from the organizer. All right. Uh, then, Joe, based on <coughs> the fact that I've got this email on my desk, I think I'm just going to point at you and say, okay. start. Thanks. Um, I, I think uh, what we have uh, in front of us is, um, is an application for a uh, one day. Um, uh, beer and wine license for uh, the Bishop Night Out, which is a social event that's being uh, organized uh, by the Bishop PTO. Um, the PTO had actually approached us initially, um, you know, and I'm going to defer to the to the administrator to correct anything that I say that's that's wrong here. Uh, but the PTO had approached us initially, um, asking us uh, for this license to cover both the uh, uh, Parents Night Out, which is the evening of social event as well as their annual holiday craft fair. Um, they've done the craft fair now for many years, um, and uh, they've typically hosted it in, a, in private establishments. Um, it's typically a, a venue for um, uh, crafters, predominantly adult crafters, to, to showcase their wares and, and offer an opportunity for, for individuals to purchase it. It's a fundraiser for the PTO. Um, there are some, um, some uh, children who do participate as crafters, though, and I think that um, uh, when this was presented to us, that there may have been some concern on that part. The, the reason that both of these came to us at the same time is that uh, I think the PTO had saw some economies of scale in uh, scheduling the events back to back in terms of you know rental costs and setup and and um, and all of that. Um, and I think that there had been in some of the communications some confusion over the the. Uh, the fact that they were two, two, um, two distinct events, but, but with some of the same um, uh, caterers that had been, um, uh, that had been um, 
contracted for. Um, I've attended the event um, in, in the in the past, and it, it is a nice you know casual event. But they um, they have in the past um, for at least the last six years they, they've they've had this event and had a cash bar on premises. And I'm not aware of any incidents at that point. But it has not been on town property, so I understand that there's there's a little bit of a higher bar uh, to be full, to be um, to be met. Um, we did receive a uh, recommendation, um, at least from the police department, against it because of the understanding that it was a children's event, um, which I think I would quibble with whether it really would be classed as a children's event. And so I sat back and I thought about what our interest actually is here in the licensing. And um, it strikes me that um, we have really two overriding interests. One is that we prevent uh, underage consumption of uh, alcoholic um, beverages and the other is that we make sure that any um, adults who do partake of alcoholic beverages do so in a, in a uh, controlled and responsible manner. Um, because of the, understand, the misunderstandings, um, the event had been uh, apparently advertised as, as having the cash bar on premises, which is unfortunate and that, that, that probably should not have been done. Um, but I, I would like to propose that um, and move that we um, we actually approve the application in front of us for uh, the um, Bishop Night Out as is, and that we actually ex extend the approval um, to the afternoon craft fair with additional conditions. Uh, those conditions. Um, uh, wait a second. I think I've written them in the uh, in the email. Um, those conditions. Uh, being that uh, any individual uh, partaking of alcohol at the event be limited to two two drinks per person for the duration of the of the craft fair, so as to prevent um, excessive uh, consumption, and also that uh, wristbands be employed to uh, clearly identify eligible um, uh, patrons to to prevent uh, drinks from being being passed, um, and. Obviously, we'd, want, we'd need to extend the requirement for uh, police details to, to mirror whatever would be required, both within the event and, I guess, out front. There's also concern with, um, with, with traffic. Um, so I, I would like to um, move that we, we do extend that uh, to, to, to the bishop and allow them to use the license for the, the duration um, in, in that manner. I, I feel like um, these are some prudent controls that we could um, that we can take to, to ensure. Is there a second? I'll second the discussion. Okay. Diane? Um, I'm not in favor of this, and I'll try to be brief and succinct for a myriad of no. reasons. First of all, we, we have a policy and a process, which is the application that we have before us. Um, and in it, it states the hours that they want it for, which is 7 to 11 p.m., as well as one of the questions that we ask them, and I don't know if town council can, I'm trying to get everybody, as many ducks in a row on my side but one of the questions on there says will persons under the age of 21 be on premises no um, so that's part and parcel of the application that's before us um, I don't know if legally um, we can just make this if uh, majority of the board accepts mr. Kiro's making an amendment but we do have an application before us from 7 to 10 7 to 11 and it says you have to which they did Fill this out, I believe it's 45 days prior to the event. So that doesn't meet that. So I don't know legally um, if we can actually make that change and, and allow it. Secondly, um, I'm not in favor of it for several reasons. First of all, the superintendent came out this year, and this only applies to public schools, um, mm -hmm. events that public school children attend. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm speaking as a high school coach. Yep. I'm not speaking on behalf of the superintendent or the school committee or as a member of the Board of Selectmen. But the superintendent, along with the principal and athletic director, has indicated to the high school and middle schools that whenever there are any athletic uh, arts and drama events where our students will be there, there will be not only no alcohol on the premises, but no consumption of alcohol on the premises. And the reason for that is just trying to um, you know, practice what we preach and talk about. Mm -hmm. So while this board is not bound by um, the decision of the superintendent, and I assume with the, the uh, approval of the school committee, but it's brand new this year, so I haven't really been following the meetings, um, we're sort of flying in the face of that. I will just say as an individual and as a coach, but also my players, not just cheerleaders, other athletes have said to me, you know, 
sometimes you adults really preach a lot about alcohol for us and it flies in the other thing. So to give a seven hour al alcohol permit where there will be children there, um, as well as we do have from um, Officer Otto, who, who did look into this and yep. said, you know, to have an alcohol permit for seven hours, the way I'm reading it, um, is certainly excessive. Um, and basically he cites, during the day is a children arts, children's arts and craft fair, which is then followed by the adult social. Someone may say no, but to me, I, I don't see why they need to be drinking for seven hours. I understand that the thing and the risk policy and all that, but um, I just think it sends a really bad message as well as, according to our application, you have to submit this within a certain amount of days. It was submitted. It was submitted for the evening event only. It was represented that while alcohol is being served, there will be no persons under the age of 21. So for all those whole myriad of reasons, and again, we're not bound by the superintendent and the um, school's policy about adults, responsible adults, no drinking when you're at an event that has children, um, I would not be supporting this. Could, could I just ask for some clarification mm -hmm. on the application before us? It, it looks like some of the, the, the um, points uh, referring to the crafts fair have actually been weighted out. Is that, is that correct? Was it originally uh, submitted within the time limit for, for both? Whited out the. Okay. This is their application. Kevin or Steve or, okay. So uh, I support Joe's motion uh, for a couple reasons. In particular, uh, I think that the important thing that we should be looking for, I, I think that Joe said it right, is um, are underage people drinking? And the other question is, are people who are overage drinking responsibly? And I just, I don't um, agree with the notion that we, that children can't see adults drink. I think that adults do drink. And I think that the way that children learn responsible drinking is by seeing people drink responsibly. Uh, and so I have no problem with, the, with children being present at an event where alcohol is being served, provided the two things, which are, is, uh, are they being served? And are pe the adults drinking responsibly? And I'm satisfied that the Bishop School PTO uh, and the professional bartender and the police detail they're purchasing can provide that. And so for that reason, I, I support Joe's motion. Is there any further discussion? Well, I'm undecided, to be honest. I mean, I think the arguments both you and Joe make, Mr. Chairman, are strong, but I also think Ms. Mahan's arguments. I mean, in a way, wish someone from the Bishop PTO would have been here to tell yep. us why and to what degree they feel that the drinking is crucial to the success of that event. Um, it, it's what would bring me there, let's be honest. <laughs> but no, but, so um, I need another minute, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I want to okay. hear what Mr. Burns says, because yeah. I think that will sway me. I, um, I do appreciate everyone's comments that have um, been made tonight. But when I'm going through um, Officer Rateau's email, it, um, I think it does come down to the town's liability at an event like this. And I think uh, Kevin's point to where does the success of this event hinge on having this bar? And I, I don't think it does. Um, and I don't think having, you know, I don't think it's necessary to have you know, that bar available for, you know, seven hours where, you know, while it is pointed out that these are tech, they might technically be two separate events. I think it, in a large part, will be the same attendees for both events. Um, so for that, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to support um, your motion. Well, and, and if I understand they did request it, then they withdrew the request, and now they have re-requested. And I, you know, so again, I wish one of them were here or somebody were here. We could. I, I agree. That I think that I too regret that because I feel like uh, part of the reason is because the request came in late and therefore there's back and forth that was happening on Wednesday as they're trying to get the packet out the door. Yep. And I think that uh, I agree that it could have, if we'd had more time, we might have get, be at a better place. I agree with that. It doesn't change my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Joe's motion seconded by Kevin, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. No. Down 3-2.
Thank you. Thank you. So but now we do have to approve approved. this other one. We don't have to, but. Yeah, well, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't want it? I move approval on the uh, secondary or the license for the evening event. 7 to 11. Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thank you, everybody. All right, next up is property classification, tax rate, John Spidell Assessor. It must be Christmas season. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, my name is John Spidell. I'm the Director of Assessments for the Town of Arlington, and I'd like to introduce Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, the Chairman of our Board. Welcome. Welcome, Mary. Good evening. Good evening to all of you. Um, I just want to point out on your agenda, it refers to this as a discussion. This is actually the public hearing that's been advertised uh, on this issue. Um, you do have the packet that John has put together for you, uh, which uh, reviews the levy limit and the amount, uh, the calculation of the fiscal 2014 tax rate. And it's set out here, and um, what is included in the levy limit is the 2013 levy limit. 2.5% new growth. Now, we want to bring to your attention, you can see that the 2014, fiscal year 2014 new growth is nearly double what it has been over the past several years. And that is primarily related to the Sims Hospital, the Mill Street Project, and some other things that have come online. That new growth is fairly substantial in the effect it has on the tax rate. But for that additional new growth, the tax increase would probably be another nine, eight or nine cents a thousand. Mary, excuse me, what page are you on? Where? We are on page two. Okay. How to determine the levy, total to be raised in the tax rate. Um, you also know that we add into the levy the school debt exclusion, the water and sewer debt that was shifted to the real estate tax bill, and the Sims capital debt exclusion to get the total to be raised. So uh, are there any questions on that? I do actually have some question about Sims, but maybe they can wait till. The, do you want sure. me to wait? And it's going to be about like how it relates to like the part that goes to pay for pay off the debt and stuff like that. Uh, do you want to talk about that now, or do you want to talk about that later? John may best answer those questions, but g give us the questions that you have. So, um, I'm curious, what fraction of the new growth money is going to the general um, <coughs> revenue? And what fraction of it is being of the new growth is being the revenues derived from it are going towards paying off the debt for Sims? Well, the debt, the Sims debt exclusion is a separate line item in the tax rate. So I would suggest to you that the new growth is probably or the Sims is all new growth. I, I, the, the, I think the, I can Mr. help. Yeah. Um, if, if Mr. Spidell could refresh my memory on what amount in the 1.3 million is attributable to Sims, I think it's 730,000. Right. Seven, almost eight, I think. Um, almost so. So, about approximately, let's say, seven hundred fifty thousand within that one point three yeah. is Sims. What What will happen <clears throat> this year and going forward until the debt is um, paid <coughs> off? That money will be raised, but then moved into the Urban Renewal Fund, mm -hmm. and then the debt service will be paid from the Urban Renewal Fund. Okay. On this year, now the past two years, and then this year, we've had to raise some money on the uh, on the debt exclusion to service that debt because we hadn't been at the full value collecting full tax payments. Mm -hmm. This is the last year we expect to raise money on the debt exclusion. The past two years we raised approximately 300000 a year. You'll see it's gone <coughs> down to one fifty this year. And that's because of the amount that's being raised up above in the new growth will be moved to the urban renewal plus that amount in the debt exclusion that will service the debt every year going forward. Um, the tax levy into the Urban Renewal Fund, and we don't expect to have to raise any more on the debt exclusion. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan, I saw you raise your hand as well. I don't know if I have a question, so I'm going to ask it. And if it's a silly one, just say it's not making sense as a question. Under the FY 2013, 2013 levy limit, um, why is it zero under the FY 2014 override? What page do you want, Diane? I'm um, on page two. Under, um, we put it all in one year. I'm sorry? I believe we put it all on one year. You did? It was oh, spread oh, out. By, by I thought it was spread out. By the Department of Revenue's terms, overrides are attributable to one fiscal year. So the, fi the fiscal year that the most recent override was attributable to is FY12. That's the only year you'll see it show up in that line. Yeah. Because after that, it goes into the base, which is built into the FY13 level limit. Okay. And since I'm not recalling that, unless somebody knows approximately off the top of their head, um, if, and if someone does, could you tell me 
what that number was, and if not? 6,490,000. Okay, thank you. Now, I, I believe you should also know that only 70% of SIMS is in this 2000. Correct. So th there's still an additional 30% to come online um, with respect to the SIMS project. Now, um, relative to what you're gonna do this evening and the issue of one tax rate versus two tax rates, what we have done for you, you can see, is that um, the residential component in this town makes up the majority of the tax base. Um, commercial, industrial, and personal totals 6.13%. Of that amount, 4.5% approximately is the commercial property in town. A quarter of a percent is industrial, and 1.42% is personal. So that, those numbers are important to you because what impact would having a split tax rate have? And we've done for you on further into your uh, handout a chart of what the impact would be if um, you, uh, in fact, had a split tax rate so that you can see the actual impact. For instance, we go from 100% to 150%, which is permitted. And the increase to the commercial taxpayer or the industrial taxpayer personal property tax but it wouldn't really apply there, would be um, a split tax rate at 150% would be an increase of $3,600, and the savings to the homeowner on $500,000 would be $239 on their tax bill. So that's a decision that you people make, um, not the Board of Assessors, but we give you that data. Um, and we think that that's the data you're looking for, what's important in the ultimate decision. Um, are there any questions? Uh, Kevin. So if I understand this correctly, whether we do or we don't, the tax comes out the same. What do you mean? Right? So if we don't go to a two level or whatever the right. right word I should say, right, the amount of taxes raised would be the same even if we go to a, have an Yes, it's just the impact on the taxpayer. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah, oh, sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just yeah. saying that it's hot. I, it, I, it's I very hot. Guys. She's right. No, I have high blood <laughs> pressure. It, really it is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not doing signals. Yeah. I'm now, sorry. you know, one of the other things I'd like to, to raise is that um, there's been some discussion that some people think the residential taxpayer is be bearing the greater burden for the commercial properties. We went back and we looked at after Patriot finished their value, re the valuation. Uh, the commercial properties went up 12% uh, increase over the value the year before. Industrial went up 6% and residential went up 4.6%. So, you know, it, it's relative. I just want to say I'm disappointed. The whole time I was speaking, Diane kept saying, hot, hot. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the bow tie, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, I don't know, I, I'll listen to my colleagues, but each year I think it's been fairly consistent. We, you know, at 6%, it's uh, low enough. Actually, Steve is here. I don't know whether he wants to uh, comment on this either. Cause, well, because other years, I think, Steve, you've, met, you've helped us understand a little bit more the difference between. But residents come first in this town, in my opinion, no question. But we need to do what we can to help businesses. And most of our businesses are very small businesses and a $700 increase is a significant in my opinion I don't know how many Dunkin Donuts cost I mean not that they're suffering at all at Dunkin Donuts but <coughs> Steve uh, sorry if you don't mind thank you thank you Mr. Gilly. thank you Mr. Chairman members of the board um, <clears throat> I have to say that going back too many years serving with Mr. Greeley on the board uh, I have to agree that I always favored a, a single tax rate for the town. It created equity amongst all parcels that are being taxed. Uh, there's an economic situation whereby if, and Mr. Greeley pointed it out quite adequately, if you want to attract businesses to Arlington, you do not want to have uh, the perception of the appearance of a higher tax rate for businesses that has the potential of going up higher each time there's a, there's a reval done on assessing property. Um, although uh, you heard the chairman of the Board of Assessors say it does not adversely impact residential, uh, the residential rate this time, uh, there are instances uh, where the calculations would, could prove that the residential taxpayer would pay an inordinate amount of an increase once the levy was determined. Um, it, it's, it is the vote of the board. Uh, as I said, I've always um, 
erred on the side of the taxpayer and the resident of the town in maintaining equity uh, across the board for the tax rate. If you have any specific questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them for you. Joe? I mean, I think I, I echo those sentiments. I mean, I think the most telling table in, in, in the book is actually the, um, <coughs> towards, towards the middle where it gives some scenarios uh, around the rate per 1,000. If we went to the full 150% differentiation, I mean, it would mean about 20 bucks a month for, you know, a residence of five, you know, assessed at 500,000. Um, but it would be, you know, $3,600 a year increase. Uh, I'm sorry, decrease for, um, yeah, I'm sorry, increase, increase. increase. So it'd mean 20 bucks in the pocket of, uh, per, per month for residences, but it would be $3,600 increase for um, the commercial industrial. And we've been hearing from the residents loud and clear through the master planning process, it's one of the top three priorities that we keep hearing again and again. We want more commercial you know, and industrial um, uh, uh, growth and uh, you know, more of a balance in our ec economic um, mix in the town. And so I, I think that, that voting for classification would, would just fly in the face of, of that. So I, I, I'll be supporting the 100% um, rate. So I, I will move that. Second. What's the rate word factor of one? Rate factor of one. Rate factor of one. There, there yeah. is, um, just so that you know, there is uh, public, part if there's yeah. public okay. participation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I know. Oh, okay. no. We've just made the motion. We're not taking the vote okay. yet. Just yeah. so there's a motion on the table. Yeah. I'll uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, I just, and so you, we're, yeah, we need that vote and we also need a rate vote. Is, you need two different votes, is that right? No, just one? Okay, all right. Um, before, uh, further discussion from the board before public, seeing none. It, all right, so this is a public hearing on the rate classification. Is there anyone from the public who wanted to weigh in on this one? Seeing none, any further conversation from the board? I, yeah, Steve. Uh, just that um, through, I like Joe's point about the master plan, and I hope that at some point Arlington does get to a point where creating a split rate would make more sense, and that is only comes with an increase in you know commercial property. So I think we're you know doing everything we can to get us on that path. So I, I'm happy to support the single rate for now. Oh. Seeing none, I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0 vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. We do have the LA-5 for you to sign. All right. Is that the, okay. that's the only Marie vote? Marie will take you, care of it. And that's the only vote you need for us to take on this? Okay. Yes. Mary, in 1967, the tax rate was 106 per thousand? It was higher in other years. And 124. In but the years. values were much, much lower. I mean, we're at... Fair market, 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Your house is probably worth 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, Mary, and other assessors. Sorry, Steve. Um, next up, so snow snow season preparation. Mike, how are you tonight? We didn't put you dead last tonight. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm well, thank you, Chairman. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tax time, snow time, at all yeah. just the same time, right? Uh, thank you for um, having me here for hopefully a few minutes. I try not to take too much of your time. Just wanted to give a brief uh, summary of um, preparation for the upcoming winter, give you an idea of uh, where, you, where the DPW is at when we're making decisions and, um, and entertain any questions. Uh, essentially, uh, as the winter seasons um, approach, we're in the mode of making sure the equipment is up and running and, uh, and serviceable. And maybe folks noticed Saturday we had kind of what we call a snow equipment shakedown. Uh, we take out the big equipment, we run them through their paces, do the different routes, make sure that mm, we're not going to have any seized breaks or whatnot. And then uh, we actually then had a little event on Sunday uh, where we got a report from the police. There were some icing conditions and we weren't alone there. Uh, I saw mass dot on route two and i guess there was some pretty bad accidents or other part of the state so we had some folks out uh, doing some salting on sunday which uh, i'm not sure if um, you have a copy of the memo i sent to the manager yeah. but that falls into kind of one of our event categories you know we essentially have four rough 
categories. One is we just have a patrol out looking to see if there's issues, uh, areas we need to address. That's a pretty uh, low level, mild condition. The second condition I would consider Sunday to be that, where we've had report of icing and we would send a, a small number of trucks out to address that. Uh, the next event would be something that's in the range of one to three inches of snow, um, where we would, uh, we can handle that with just our uh, salting vehicles and our plow equipment that we have in-house. Uh, once the forecast calls something more than three inches of snow, uh, we just don't have the equipment or personnel to keep up with that, and that's when we would call either uh, a limited amount or all of our contracted plows in to help. And uh, at, at most, we would call in about 50 pieces of equipment, and uh, um, if it wasn't so bad, we can call anywhere between 20 and 30. So we, we, we play it as, it as it comes for the uh, snow event. Um, so then the second part of the snow uh, preparation is what do we do with the, the snow if we get lots of it? And uh, slowly and slowly we've been losing our spaces to put snow. Uh, we can tuck a little bit away at the yard, but it, 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 it <coughs> builds up pretty quickly. We don't have a lot of room. Uh, this year, I have two uh, plans for dealing with snow that needs to be removed from the streets. One is for uh, storms about three, well, four, five, six inches to about 10 inches or so. Uh, most of the snow can stay on the street, but we have to clear it from crosswalks and um, major intersections near school so kids can walk to school. An event such as that, the plan is to truck it to, uh, right now, the reservoir uh, parking lot and, and store it there. And as we start to run out of space at that location, we would have a private hauler uh, truck that snow out of town to make room for future events. Uh, in the case that we have uh, a significant blizzard like we had in February of last year, we get uh, 30 plus inches and we need to clear the avenue so that uh, businesses can function and parking exists, uh, we would call in uh, an operation where we would have a contractor clear the streets and truck it directly out of town, which is, we, we did that uh, in some small portion last year as well. Uh, so that, that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, so far, so good with the, at least our equipment. You know, it's, it's aging, but uh, we're maintaining it well, and I think we'll do just fine. It all do now depends on the severity of winter, which last year was pretty bad, so hopefully someone gives us a break this year. Mm -hmm. But if anyone had any questions on that. Questions? Diane? I want to thank Mr. Rademacher and the town manager for um, getting us this information. Um, just a, f a few points you may want to speak to, just some to, pu to put on the table. Can you tell me right now, when you did the equipment rollout, how many operational snow fighters we have? Uh, we had eight out, eight uh, snow fighters out, and there are two that just need some minor repair to get rolling. And, and the reason I ask that is last year a substantial amount of the snow fighters um, sat for many, many weeks because they did break down. And we were caught in a situation of, um, and, and if anybody wants to add to that. It would <coughs> what is a snow fighter? Is that just a truck with a plow? It's or? the big, huge one that the everybody wants. They say, I don't want the 50, and I shouldn't say the 50. Well, we have eight of these, is that what you uh, We have uh, 12. Yeah. Uh, well, some of them pretty aged, you know, but we have 10 that we can easily roll into service. Uh, they're the larger ones you'll see on the avenue or the fighting snow on the steeper hills where contractors dare not go. Right, and, and I'm just, quite, just putting before the, uh, the town manager and yourself, I know last year um, we had quite a few snow fighters that sat there for a few weeks because we were waiting, it, it took a, to me it seemed like an inordinate time, but probably because all these aging snow fighters, which I'm gonna call them snow fighters, whatever the official thing is, um, in other cities and towns. Um, if we do have a winter um, like we did last year, have we explored um, whether there are other companies out there we can get a quicker turnaround on getting these equipment snow fighters back into service because I know that quite a time that we had close to half the fleet down um, and then my other question was I thought and I guess I misread it because I went back and looked at the capital budget I thought we were budgeting this year for three new replace three new replacement snow fighters but now it's not until next year I don't, it was not uh, was in the it? budget for three in one particular no. year. We have, do, we, year. We do one a year over the course of three years. I don't we have, yeah, we have one a year for the course of the next three years, and then 
another one in a year or two after that, I believe. Okay, so you I know. just would put forth the, the discussion of maybe if we could look at that and maybe every other year do one and then do two or something like that until we can get back that at least 65, 70% of our snow fighters that a lot of the streets, especially the hills, really need. Um, that we get to that point. Um, and, you know, I understand capital expenditures and, re and requests and things like that. As well as, are we exploring um, so that we don't have the same issue? Because it is an aging fleet for the, these big pieces of equipment that everybody wants. Even if you're on Mass Avenue, East Island, and you want that piece too. I'm not saying a snow fighter shouldn't be doing that on Fairmont or Egerton or anything like that. But also look into that we don't have a snow fighter down, you know, more than three, four weeks. Um, and I don't know, you may be limited in that in terms of where you can get them repaired. I know there's some repair that's done down at the yep. yard, but then it's the parts and sometimes getting that professional. In. Sure, yeah, I, I, the, the guys do a, a very good job on the yard. I, I don't believe we had half the fleet down. I know there was a few vehicles that were, that were down for a longer period of time um, because of parts that were difficult to get. Uh, it's a long story, you know, we go with the lowest bidder and sometimes that vehicle is something that's not locally sourced and it's a state bid type of thing, but uh, for future purchases we're going to try to uh, do better on that and maybe... Yeah, if we could. Just where people say, I definitely get snow removal and I get trash pickup with my taxes, that's two things I can count on. So the other thing is, um, again, just for future references, and I know the town manager is working with all of our employees, union and management, on the comparable salary study committee. But, um, and I know we're always looking at employees and things like that. I know I get many questions from, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, you know, when does the second wave of town employees come in to drive those snow fighters and all that? And there really is no second wave. So you may already be doing that, but I just, again, want to put it on the table that when we're going through budgets and the like, um, especially with the override, if we could um, maybe project out every other year, we get one more town employee that can you know, operate that piece of equipment or, or somehow deal with that. Um, I, and again, I'm just for discussion, just to, to leave before you. Then the other thing was um, I have had the conversation with the town manager, and I know he's spoken with the DPW director, Mr. Rademacher. Um, I know that purchasing what I'm going to call a mini melting machine like they have over at um, Massport at the airport and are purchasing with, it with surrounding communities is cost prohibitive. Um, two questions. The first question this is what I think, tell me what's the truth, <laughs> um, what's the facts. Um, we pay for removal of snow. If we have a very large, and that's a cost, if we have a very large storm event, like other cities and towns do, I would anticipate just by going by other businesses that that rate's gonna be a higher rate, or is it a flat rate? For the removal? Like say everybody gets hit with a foot and a half, two foot, two feet. Right, so we, we will have a contract in place for that large scale removal, so. Uh... But does those, the cost, cost increase, will be fixed. It's, is the cost increase sort of like supply and demand? It, it won't, no, because we'll, we'll have a contract in place for that removal. We'll before have a, the snow before, falls. You know, before the snow falls, we will have a contractor with the price to, my, to do the work. Yeah, my question is if it's a three <clears throat> to four inch snow event yep. removal, or it's a three to four feet yep. snow removal, is it the same price in the contract? No, it's an hourly. So how long? If it's more snow, it's going to take so, longer to remove. Yeah. So you'll pay the same hourly rate. You might just pay it you longer. Pay for a longer time. Correct. So, so my th what I would like in the future, when it's an appropriate time, is just if the board could sort of have a cost analysis of um, what I'm going to call the mil mini melting machine purchased alone by Arlington, what the cost would be and cost out purchase regionally with some other cities in town. I'm not saying they're willing to do that, but I know some of them being on other lists have the same issue, um, along with what a five or 10 year contract projection would be. Well, um, we, so can, we can look into that. The difficult part is the, it's not necessarily an, an apples to apples comparison. Um, to purchase a snow melter, uh, there's that cost, but there's the, um, the methodology which, by which you would use it. You, you would still need a place to bring the snow to stockpile it and melt it because you can't it, they can't necessarily unless you buy uh, they they come in different sizes uh, the more the t there's only one or two communities I know of that have one and they have a, a three hundred thousand dollar machine and it can only melt snow at a at a slower rate uh, so they basically stockpile it in a parking lot and then after the storm is over they chip away at it if we were going to have one on the Ave that would melt it as we put the snow into it, that's more about a $750,000 piece of equipment. 
So really for uh, that type of machinery to, to work for the town, you still need a kind of a, a layover facility. Like the which was still like well, that, the yeah. the res unfortunately wouldn't work because as it melts, it has to go somewhere and it has to be a certain distance from a, a fresh body body of water. I don't want to beat it. Yeah, it just, no, that's right. We're being told for for even before the current town manager, it's just cost prohibitive. If I could just get even if it's in the spring, if the, you could just supply the board with sort of you know, um, maybe after this storm event's over, say here's what we did, here's what we paid in the contract, here's what the hourly rate was, here's how many hours it was, and then here's the thing that you've been asking for, Mrs. Mahan, you know, and this is why we tell you it's cost prohibitive. I'm not saying it's anything, I mean, you have a snow plan and it's a very good snow plan um, with your DPW employees under the direction of the town manager, I'm not questioning that at all. So maybe in the spring, early summer, um, after town meeting even, you know, we can get into that. Yeah, no, we can certainly work on that. I mean, I know <clears throat> Mike's been working to get pricing. I know it's anecdotal, but um, Mike even spoke with a dealer of snow melting machines who actually told him, I think, if, I, I don't want to quote you, Mike, but saying, oh, for Arlington, I wouldn't sell you a snow melting machine. <laughs> uh, so there, it, it's an interesting sort of issue to deal with. And, and the regional issue is a really tough one, too, because we all get snow. So it would be tough to share that kind of machine Cause the regionally because we'd all have, if we, all, if we had a need, we'd all have a need at the same time. Uh, so sharing it would be challenging, but um, I know Mike is working to price it out. When, we, when we get those prices, we'll definitely like you share. You may it. find out regionally there's a city or town that says I have the appropriate site. You all can bring your snow there. It's going to work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my thing is just having the conversation. You might find a completely different solution. Sure. But, you know, dump it in Mahan's backyard. It's all done. We're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Steve. You know, just uh, I appreciate Diane's leadership on this, but with the uh, cost analysis that's been done, I think that um, it wasn't said explicitly, but a benefit analysis needs to be done side by side. So we, as Mike was saying, you know, we can see not only just the cost, but we're, we're, we're what's really doing the work. And if that snow melting machine isn't going to do it, then that's, you know, mm -hmm. fine. But I just think that I want to include, just for the record, as um, one would say, the um, we need that benefit to be involved, um, to be sure. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks for all your work on this. Sure. Um, uh, do, I think I understand that the uh, pre-treating operations we do not only prevent bonding of the snow to the road surfaces, but it, in the big picture, potentially uh, lower the overall amount of salt that we would have to use if we weren't doing the pre-treating operations? Well, it, um, you pre-treat it and it keeps the snow from sticking, so you won't get that hard pack yeah. of snow. So you're, you're correct, right? If you get a real hard pack of snow, you're going to eventually, at the end of the storm, you need to put more product down to melt through. Right. This allows it, you to plow it off the street before yeah. it really sticks. Yeah. yeah. And did I understand from last year, um, in that same vein, that we were also... You're right. <laughs> In that same vein, we were looking at um, higher tech spreader spreading technology so that we more efficiently yes. spread the salt. We're not, you know, wasting some out right. into people's front yards or, or, or whatnot. I, I didn't know where we were with that. That's something that definitely will be purchased as we buy uh, newer equipment. We're still looking to see if it, the existing equipment is something that can be retrofitted okay. um, efficiently. Okay, great, thanks. And you may have answered one of my other questions in using the reservoir for, um, uh, for uh, depositing the snow. Uh, presumably, even without the snow melter in the picture, there, there are environmental constraints yes. on how, how close we can get to the res. Correct. To the uh, res. I've had um, a preliminary meeting with the Conservation Commission, and we're going to present a plan uh, for them to uh, review and hopefully approve. Uh, I, I believe we've come to some agreement on what that plan will look like. I just need to formalize that with the Conservation Commission. Okay, thanks. And the last question may be more for the town manager. Um, the new, and this, there's a lot of good information here, but presumably we have a public communications um, a, a strategy for as snow season is coming on as to um, what people can expect, where they should call with complaints or such, because, you know, we... We're always getting people calling, calling us directly, but if, you, you know, if we have some place to just directly, I know we've got that all up on the websites and such, but presumably we'll, we'll, we'll do another push to tickle folks. A absolutely. I mean, as we do every year, uh, we'll push that out. And actually, Mike and I have discussed uh, possibly updating what we have on the website with some of the information that was provided to the board yeah. on the memo. Yeah. This is very helpful. Kevin. So, Mike, do you want me to move receipt or <coughs> for approval? Uh, whatever the board so desires. 
<laughs> a receipt, I guess. Uh, I'd like to move receipt. But did I hear you say that a dealer said he would not sell us a nice melting machine? He, we, he wouldn't recommend it. He, uh, I, let's send this woman over to yeah. this guy. Well, what <laughs> the, he, uh, his, his, the discussion I had with this individual person is he is very uh, um, specific not to oversell these machines. He, he said it's not necessarily your, the, 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 the silver bullet. It's a tool to use with other um, methods for treating your snow. So he, 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 he warns against municipalities thinking if they get this, then they don't, they're not going to need a place to store snow or they're not going to need to truck snow or whatnot. And he also doesn't like to oversell it in that he said to me, you know, you, you'll buy this and uh, it lasts maybe 20 years and you'll probably use it five years of the 20. So it's a fairly big capital investment that you may not use every year and he doesn't want unhappy customers. So he basically just wanted to educate as best as possible. Uh, so we fully understood what we were getting. So I move receipt. Second. second. Se I move second. All right. Um, so thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about this. Uh, you know, it's a New England thing, and so you know the snow is coming, and so one of the big topics is what are we going to do about the snow? And so right. I really appreciate you coming in and talking yeah. about the you know the inner workings of, of how it goes out. Um, I totally think you're focused on the right thing which is, of course, removing the snow. <laughs> uh, but I will put on, like, I'll, I'll talk about something else that I saw that I thought was really interesting. Uh, so uh, the city of Chicago exposed the GPS data for all of their trucks, and then someone took that GPS data and made it into a real-time map of where the trucks were. Right. And so as you could sit at home and see, like, you know, how come my street hasn't been plowed? You could know the last time it was plowed and when the estimate maybe of when the next time was. Right. And uh, one of the things that I think we, that we got from the Arlington Visual Budget Project that was kind of cool was we exposed the data and then private citizens render it into mm -hmm. something that's neat. And so I know that we've got GPS coming online on the snow plows and it might be interesting to see if or we do or I thought we did. It's a, it's a, it's a fairly limited uh, it's a pilot limited, uh, okay. we're working but, on. Okay, yeah. so all right, well, then maybe it, it's not ready for prime time. But at might the same not, time, yeah. Yeah. I think about things like we expose the data as a town mm -hmm. and then we let other people do creative things with the data. MBTA has had a lot of success with that with all the apps and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, it just be, yeah. You're, you're focused on the right thing, but that doesn't keep me from, you know, <laughs> sure. coming up with a... I saw, do I see a question, Paulo? Yeah, I have a comment and a question. All right. I, it's not a public hearing, but go for it. My comment was um, just it's been a few years, I think, since um, Director Rodemick, his predecessor, has uh, left um, that we've had a snow and ice committee meeting. Just throwing that out there, it's been a few years. I think that got some positive citizen involvement, especially got some uh, good... Good suggestions from uh, Council on Aging, Commission on Disability. I know the last couple of years in the spring we've talked about maybe having those again. It just never happened. Um, I also want to express the importance, whether it's a six inch storm or a 36 inch storm. I think sometimes when it comes to uh, some of the pedestrian access issues with the snow removal, the six inch storms might not get uh, the snow removal that they deserve. And we all know what happens on every corner in every business district. All that snow turns to ice, and they can be there for weeks, if not months, like we had last year. So um, I'm just curious what the plan is for the pedestrian accessible curb cut issues, bus stops, Minuteman Trail, and what the citizens can expect going forward. Adam, if, there's, if there's a time frame or a metric, so what we can expect. Adam, are you, is, you, is this? Are you yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I'll let Mike speak to it. I mean, there, there's a, a list of all public ways, intersections, and curb cuts that the DPW does maintain. Uh, I know we spoke earlier today about the Minuteman Bikeway and another matter, and that is something that we also maintain. As for a timeline, I guess it, it does depend on the severity of the storm and the availability of resources. But uh, Mike, do you want to inform that anymore? So, so we can anticipate once again that all the curb cuts on Mass Ave, Broadway, and Warren will be addressed? I, I mean, do, I, do you want to speak to the list in specific? Sure, sure. I mean, I, I believe that... It's, it's a priority of ours once the storm has uh, wound down and the, and the guys fighting the storm uh, have a chance to get some rest, the, the next effort is to clear up those crosswalks at, on those major roadways. Uh, you mentioned the bikeway, which uh, we do keep plowed as well, and that happens either during the storm or after, depending on the severity of the storm. Um, like I, like uh, Mr. Chaplain said, a timeline is difficult. 
depending on how, if it's a, a shovel that can clear a crosswalk or if it's, it needs to be a small piece of equipment. Uh, but that is our goal, to get those, um, those intersections cleared, as well as uh, we have a certain radius around each school that we clear the crosswalks uh, and um, curb cuts so the kids can get to school. So will all those tasks be done by city employees or? Typically it's uh, town employees. So we have a motion for receipt. We have a second. Any further? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Thank man. you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you Mike. Next up, ACMI annual report. John Leone and Norm McLeod. <clears throat> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. We, um, in your packet, you should have received the uh, annual report, and we had sent around electronically. I think Marie circulated our um, audited financial. We're going to give her an original for your files. You got them. So between those two things, you have a picture of um, ACME for the past year. As you can see we've once again passed the auditing, and we're going to be filing our tax return within the next day or so. And it, the booklet gives you a good summation of what we've done in the past year. And what we've accomplished, uh, one of the couple of the big things Norm will tell you a little more, <clears throat> is we fully opened Studio B down across from Stop and Shop. Um, that was a big push for us and we used a bit of our funds. Um, do you have anything else to say about that before we get to our other issue? Other than saying that, that I think most of the, uh, most of the instructors at, uh, at the high school were thrilled with the idea of just walking across the street. Mm. <clears throat> it, was, it, it saved so much time on the part of the students having to go all the way up to the main studio in Park Ave. So the students had a lot more time to, to learn, and it, it was much easier on the, on the faculty, certainly. The other thing we wanted to address with you guys tonight is we have three years for our contract with the cable companies runs out. Um, and in this, I think you got a letter back in April, June, from the state. <clears throat> April and June. Yeah, April and June from the state giving us the notice. We have to, not that we can tell you what to do, but we just want to remind you that we have to get back to them and say we're going to and to the cable companies that we will be opening up negotiations and a part of that is another needs assessment. I think that's why you have that big pile of cash, the 50000 put aside is for this needs assessment and rehiring a, con a lawyer to negotiate that and I think, I'm not sure, we, Norm and I have asked Marie who all was on the cable advisory committee we knew it was John Marr and Michael Quinn, and I don't know if there's anyone else. We have some appointments and we We just appointed yeah. some tonight, yeah. Yeah, I think right. it's, I don't know if it was Joseph Wise. It's my understanding they want to wait until after the. Yeah, my understanding is they plan to come before the board sometime yeah. in February uh, to initiate the process. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, uh, obviously that's the town's ball of wax, but we're really you know, I'm interested in it as well, because. Yeah. Are the things we would like to get out of it, just so right up front, is keep the 5%, keep the capital we get, and HD channels. We'd like to have all three of our channels transmit to HD. Um, all of the equipment we've been buying, all the equipment we bought for the studio, both studios, is all HD capable. We just need to have something to plug it into. And the cable companies, I don't know, are they reluctant to give it out? Or? They're reluctant to give us the ban any access station the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. what it comes down to. But, but uh, there, are, there are some. RCN has given it to Lexington and has given it to Newton, I believe. But that's partly, I believe, because RCN is, so to speak, not quite as big as Verizon or Comcast. So, yeah. So we definitely did get the letter from the state. Yeah, and we yes. looked at it. And uh, I talked it over briefly with the town manager. And I shared it with the rest of the board as a correspondence. And uh, we did deliberately push it off to next year just because there's, there will be plenty of time still. And we just didn't want to uh, kick less, on it. Less right than on. you think. Sorry? Less than you think. <clears throat> it, it, the assessment, it takes a while. You have to plan. Yeah. Plan surveys. Who's going to do it? You have to get it out. You have to do it, and then I haven't forgotten it, and it will happen. And <laughs> it, it's a long process. Our first yeah. time we did it seven, eight years ago. Um, Kevin and Diane will remember. Um, it was quite a challenge to get them all lined up and get them all given us the same package. It, it's and they're fighting it now. They don't want to give the five percent anymore. They just want to, you know, nationwide. They're looking to cut these, and unless we go in fully prepared. Mm -hmm. We, we have a lot to lose because, um, frankly, that's what runs us. And if we lose that, the franchise fee, um, 
<laughs> we don't know what to do. <laughs> we're looking for a job. Yeah, we haven't figured that one out yet. We hope we don't have to. But we just wanted to kind of bring that to the forefront and push it along some. If I may. Yep. The, one, the rec one of the recommendations that, uh, that we've talked about at various conferences and legal counsel that we've been talking to informally uh, when I go to conferences is that at once this letter appears in, on your desk, the, they're recommending that you respond very briefly within a six-month period from the date of the letter. And that means basically saying, acknowledging to the cable companies that, yes, you're taking this seriously and that we're going to be pursuing this with legal counsel. And they emphasize, say, with legal counsel. That's all you have to do right now, and then the Cable Advisory Committee could take over from that point. Okay. One last, I don't know whether you've been watching Arlington Public News. Mm -hmm. Good. We're getting better, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops, sorry. I was going to say, do you have any questions or comments or anything you want to bring to Norman my attention now that you have us as captive audience? Uh, thank you for this and for including so many people who are up at ACMI, ACME, um, that are involved. Kudos, good idea getting a picture of Milo in there. Um, yes. We certainly have enjoyed him here at the selections meeting. He was here earlier, but he has yeah. school. And just because I have the audience, um, and I'll leave it to you all in the chair and town manager in terms of um, you know, when we respond, if there's a brief response initially, as I think I'm hearing suggested, um, as well as after we have the appointments and reappointments to the Cable Advisory Committee, um, I think one person serves as chairman pro temp. Maybe that person should be contacted and say, you know, what is your purview, what is your pleasure? And then since you're here, just sort of an ongoing um, item on the plate that's um, come before the board and, and you're certainly well aware of and I understand it's not a quick fix but I we've all heard a lot of times from people who come to selectmen's meetings is there any way you know when you're sitting in the back some people just don't want to sit in the front there was a solution where you were turning the sound up um, so that you could hear it coming from there but I think the previous um, producer person behind the controls that that was bothersome if that could once again somehow be addressed as well as sometimes, unfortunately not for me, sometimes you have selectmen who don't speak that much and who don't speak that loud. Um, even if you are sitting in that front row, you really can't hear. So just once again, the request, and, and I don't know if, that, if anybody else has anything to add to, to that. That actually came up in a discussion we had <clears throat> with the town manager, and in all honesty, we've been so busy with Arlington Public News, honestly, it slipped through the cracks. But I don't attend all that often myself here, but sitting in the back here, I couldn't hear what was going on. No. So I immediately texted, I texted my staff and let them know, we've got to fix this. Only because yeah. this is like the... Yeah. How long have you all been in existence? Four, five Se years? Seven, seven years. years. Five years, we've discussed it, so just, sorry. No, I agree. I mean, even if it, I mean, just let's get a sound system in here. It's not yep. like we need to do this through the cable equipment, I would guess. Not at all. You know, but, um, but we'll you know, fix it. Here comes Jess to say, will you speak loud and on? Yeah. <laughs> the, the re she's pointing out the reason, again, that we don't use the TV anymore, because if you turn that up, you get feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just well, goes into the room itself. But we can, we can adjust the other speakers that we can purchase. It's not a big purchase. Just put one of the back on either side here, lower the volume, angle the speakers. It's not a big problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, you know what it is? Because I've told people that for years. And, yes. And they come in, and we, it's a poor reflection on us. That's all. So you poor all, reflection on us, too, and I apologize. Thank you. Uh, but, they, but so many come in, and they think all these mm -hmm. microphones are mm -hmm. so they can hear us in the back, and how often they make the comment, the mic turn on the microphones, turn on the microphones, and these right. are our cable uh, phones, of course. Thank but, you. Uh, I, Sorry, is this also a move receipt? Uh, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, move receipt, but I, I would just like to say I have seen a significant increase in the quality of uh, programming there, and I congratulate you and you, John, as well. Uh, the selectmen debates this year I thought were really professionally done. I sounded like a moron, but I thought that the way it was, you know, the, the two interviewers, the timing, the number of staff that was there, I mean, you know, I have been doing this a couple of years, and uh, also the, uh, the way you did the 100th anniversary show for us, uh, and the way that, that came out, I thought was really, and these selectmen meetings, I'm stopped all around town with people who, it, it is amazing to me how many people say, well, I saw you the other night in selectmen's meeting, you were wrong on such, you know, but it, it's amazing how many people do. Uh, well, we found out from the survey, this is the number one watch show in the town of Arlington. Congratulations, listeners, for making us number one. But anyhow, move receipt. Second. Second.
Uh, I think know. Kevin said it all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, my only comment was I've been, I was impressed reading the report talking about how the program expansion has been going. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was impressed that it was the, the you're able to support that scope increase. And I, um, I'm, it was impressive to me. That's all right. Yeah. All, right. That's it. all right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank but you. stay on us on that, John. On the, I will. On the cable, yeah. Next up, a common victual license. Sir, Sergio Goncal Oof, Goncalves. I'm, I'm sure I screwed that up. Come on up to the microphone and tell me how to say your name. I apologize. You've got representation? Good evening, everybody. Uh, Sergio Goncalves. Goncalves. I apologize. Welcome. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Carl Tamayan. I'm representing Bagelville of Arlington, Inc., whose principal is Sergio Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez would like the opportunity to open a 64-seat restaurant at uh, 1398 Massachusetts Avenue, uh, the former Panera site. Um, we will be serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and we are operating seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Questions? Kevin? Samples? Oh, yeah. Did you bring some sample of foods tonight? Yeah. Uh, so I move approval subject to uh, all conditions as set forth. And uh, thank you very much for choosing Arlington for your business and using such a sharp attorney. He always does a very good job here. I second. Motion to second. Questions? Joe? No, I'd just like to say th thank you also for f filling that space. You know, I've heard probably more about that space, you know, since it's gone vacant from, um, you know, residents around the town who are really missing that type of an establishment uh, there. And so uh, uh, thank you very much. I think it's, it's important to have a, a meeting place um, <clears throat> of that sort up, up in the Heights and, uh, and uh, appreciate it. I, I, I'm sorry, I do have one more important question. Yes, the pastrami sandwich has brown mustard. Can I get it with yellow? Oh, yes. Yeah. I move uh, approval. Uh, so I had two questions, one of them more serious than the other. Uh, so I'm just curious, um, compared to Panera, and like, you know, obviously people are used to Panera being there and what the space was like, and, uh, and do you envision it being roughly similar, or do you think that there's a significant departure that, like, something, I'm just curious, like, in terms of, you know, what should people expect when they walk in? The floor plan is basically the same layout as Panera that we removed a, a wall and created a half wall. Yeah. To make it a little more open seating, mm -hmm. but the floor plan is pretty much the same layout mm -hmm. as what was there with Panera. Okay. Uh, we reduced the seating though, just to give people a little more room. All right. But uh, in terms of like atmosphere and type of food and stuff like that, roughly the same. Um, Most of the same, yeah. Uh, Except for the. We're gonna have a uh, open bar salad, so mm -hmm. people can make your own salads. Yeah. Then we have a uh, soups, sandwiches, bagel sandwiches. Yeah. We have a uh, 21 different flavor on a. On a the bagels from 12 to 15 flavor, different flavor on, on, um, on the cream. Yeah. So most is the same, but uh, I think we're going to have a better price. Wi Fi? Yeah. Wi Fi. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's walking distance from my house, and that's definitely a, a sometimes a workspace. Yeah. Which one do you think will be Gordon's table? Here? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you walk into the left. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I saw it when reading through your pre the other places you own. Uh, there's Monkey Bar. <clears throat> Monkey Bar. Is that Provincetown or somewhere else? That's uh, uh, Province. That's Fenton Hall. Yeah. Yeah. I. Then I have a uh, good, good drinks. Good drinks. <laughs> yeah. Good drinks Monkey Bar too. Yeah. Ex excellent. All right. Yes, Diane. Just one, I'm sure your attorney has um, made you aware, because I see you have for trash removal two, two times a week or more if needed that there is a town bylaw concerning when the trash company can come in and haul. And I'm sure he's made you aware, you know, what those restrictions are. Um, that would be the only thing. Just weird that you're, you're abutting neighbors right behind you. Not that it doesn't apply to everybody, it does. But I just raised that point. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Number six uh, is canceled. They have uh, withdrawn, at least for the time being. And so we'll move on to number seven, which is the Citizens Open Forum. 
Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. Is there anyone here for <coughs> Citizens Open Forum? I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to move on. And we will start, do the, uh, we've got two uh, Minuteman issues. First up is the draft report, navigating the Minuteman commuter bikeway. Christopher Tonkin. Hello. Uh, Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you the chairman and uh, the board. Uh, probably going to have actually three topics pushed all together, so okay. um, hopefully we can deal with that. I'm going to hand you all a little package. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So, um, thanks. You have a copy of the newly produced map um, and a copy of our annual, uh, sem sorry, uh, semi annual report, which touches on the tool report. And uh, finally, there's a copy of our comments, the clamp uh, for your uh, notes or your, your records. Um, before I get started, I'd also like to thank the DPW for fixing the bumps recently. Uh, I think that's a great thing to do. Glad they got it done before the season changed, and uh, we're all very happy about that. So thank you very much for the DPW. So I'm going to run through the report, if that's okay with you, um, and there'll be the clamp, the tool reports in there, and then a few comments at the end. And if you want to stop me or um, say anything, please go ahead. I think what we what I'd like so it bear in mind the time. I yeah, think. exactly. So let's do um, the two report type items that, yep. that you wanted to give. Let's talk about the um, the draft report. Okay. And then let's talk about the usage guidelines. So let's do them, you know, kind of reporting first, and then the draft like the draft report about the the common signage and stuff like that. Yep. And then let's do the. Do you want the, the, we have a bike committee report. I can run through that quickly too. Do, that's, sure. yeah, I, I'll do that first if that's okay with you. Yep. So uh, we work with TAC, um, develop a set of guidelines for the striping of uh, roads in, in town. Uh, you've seen that in the west of Mass Ave. I think they've been quite successful. Um, they may need tweaking a little bit. We're quite okay with them being tweaked. We regard them as a work in progress and nothing that's etched in stone. Um, as, a, as a user, I've been very happy uh, cycling on it, and I've also as a driver, I've been very happy driving on it. It's worked well, I think, and bodes well for the future. Uh, we held another tour of Arlington again. We went through um, around the Mystic uh, watershed, went across um, the Medford Boat Club, who had uh, permission from them to use the boat club. Uh, that was a great um, way of seeing part of Arlington you don't normally see by coming down the Mystic. Uh, it was a nice event, beautiful day. And we have to thank the Winchester Police Force, who escorted us on two motorcycles the entire length of the tour because Arlington Police Force was unavailable. So they had uh, other commitments that morning unexpectedly. Um, we held a, a safety stop on the bike, bike trail, which we got your permission for earlier this year. Uh, that was quite successful, but of course it rained a little bit beforehand, and so it wasn't perhaps as heavily used, but we definitely were able to uh, assist some people, and one person in particular who's, when you lift their bike up, their wheel fell out. So there are a lot of people out there on very dangerous um, machines. Uh, we're able to help them out, uh, point out people how they should wear their helmets. Again, a lot of people don't do that correctly. Um, those, of course, are the people who want to listen. Uh, we also engage people in conversation about the Mass Ave project and uh, handed out the uh, um, pamphlet we worked on with the police department detailing uh, cyclist rights and, and uh, responsibilities. Um, we did a town day again. Um, we talked about all the things that um, concern the citizens. It's a cy so cycling on sidewalks, nighttime visibility, as well as uh, traffic enforcement. Um, the committee has been uh, in contact with TAC uh, from a letter that we received from you, that uh, you received from a concerned citizen about the Lake Street crossing. I don't really go into that right now, but uh, TAC's developing a more uh, thorough uh, response to that. But I just let you say there's no easy solution. Um, we have also been engaged in bike counts and um, the numbers have really almost doubled in four years so that's the usage and we've been counting so that, that's quite a considerable use and that bodes um, significant um, for the tool report I'm going to get into later and also it, um, economic development of how many people are using the bike trail 
Uh, the crest of the town manager, we worked on the uh, usage guidelines, uh, currently has those, um, those guidelines, and we're waiting to hear back as to we're going to finalize those. Um, so I think I can, that's more or less the report I'm giving on that, unless you want to say any more about that. Do you want to jump in on that, or do you want to... No, let's put it, we'll, we'll, we'll talk okay. about those, that'll be, be our last one. All right. Um, Okay, and we worked on the tool report. So, the tool report. Um, it sort of, I'm gonna sort of hit on some highlights here, and they sort of had, some of them were under the headlines of maintenance as a roots invasion, uh, which is, we've just had something, the DPW fixed it, but it's an ongoing problem, and there, there are ways to mitigate these problems. Some are less expensive, some are more expensive, but I think going forward, it's something we're gonna have to pay attention to, because, it might be more expensive to do it piecemeal than just fix the problem in certain areas where we know there's a lot of trees and we know there's a lot of roots. Um, you know, again, we want to keep the, the surface in good condition because damage um, can occur if it's not kept in good condition and again, it ends up being more expensive than you want to. They, they have um, tried to develop a series of guidelines for signs and uh, usage signs uh, along the entire route of the bikeway. Uh, so that we're consistent from one end of the bikeway to the other. Um, perhaps differentiating the towns by color. So for example, uh, we've used blue for Minutemen uh, bikeway signage in the past, for example, in the center of the banners. We might continue to use blue, Lexington might use green, and uh, Bedford may use some other color, but they would have the same design, fonts and everything else would be the same. So there'd be a, a, a continuity that you knew you were on a bike trail going somewhere, but you were passing through different towns as you went through it. Um, and then sort of um, they suggested that there was a, a common policy um, towards the upkeep and the various uh, usage such as um, we developed for the town manager um, between the different towns. So they all had sim similar policies. Um, so, you know, this, this may mean that uh, they have to develop something like a, um, a joint powers committee such as was, um, I believe, enacted uh, to deal with the uh, sewer overflows in the Alewife area, uh, but that is considered to be a fairly important key factor for ongoing maintenance of the bikeway as a unit, not just the Arlington bikeway or the, uh, Med or the uh, Bedford bikeway or the Lexington bikeway. Uh, we also, uh, they also felt there should be various um, education outreach uh, reach, and it should be marketed towards you know, uh, motorists so they can, they can um, know about the uh, responsibilities on bikeway crossing. They're also very specific about how bikeway crossing should be set up. There are some, for example, not so many in Arlington, but more in other, other towns, where there are more bikes and cars, and maybe the stop signs should be actually on the cars rather than the bikes in these instances. Uh, I think seasons four might be an example of this. But again, this doesn't really, um, for the most part in Arlington, I think, Although down by the uh, spy pond, there might be an intersection there that might fall under this sort of category. Um, they also make use of you know, um, social media, uh, club member outreach, and safe route to schools may also be involved in this sort of uh, activities. They also suggested uh, the possibility, due to the high usage, that the bike trail is widened in places. Um, this, again, may not be such a feasible um, in Arlington, because Arlington has rights of way issues, and we also have a lot of bridges that not much can be done with. It's also expensive. So um, again, this might be something in the future, but it might be something that uh, on the uphill stretch, for example, you might want to widen the uphill part. Uh, there might be possibility of that, uh, but maintain the downhill, and it's just like a, a, some, road, some roads do. Um, and also, you know, the, there should be, um, it is a facility that exists right now, but it can be interconnected with many other facilities around and is being so. The extension, um, the reformatory extension in Bedford, uh, possibly into Concord at some time, uh, the Medford and uh, the new uh, bikeway that's going in at uh, Fresh Pond that will take it down to Ale, uh, maybe down to Watertown and maybe to the river, which will enable a lot of cyclists to be kept off the roads, um, uh, disentangling cars and uh, bikes. And as we're seeing more and more cyclists, you know. This is something we want to perhaps um, encourage because if you're not on a bike, if you're on a bike, you're not in a car. Less cars, there's more space for the cars. So I mean, it's sort of, you know, although uh, many drivers don't like cyclists, 
if you get them on a bike, they're not in the car, impeding your progress. Um, so uh, it's pretty much summation. Um, you know, the, the usage is going up. Uh, this is sort of, you know, we should, uh, implications for the economic development in town, along with towns along the route. Um, the bikeway was created by the, the three separate communities acting separately, but I think the maintenance is going to be something that we're going to have to do together. And this is where I think the, um, the three powers committee may be something that we really have to invest some time and effort into looking into how it's set up um, and how it functions. Um, also, on a sort of similar matter, we've recently been approached <coughs> by um, an individual um, who's uh, familiar with um, funding of these kinds of, um, and he wishes to form a, a Friends of Bikeway, uh, the Bikeway in Arlington. So this would be a way of possibly uh, funding, uh, marshalling volunteers, uh, doing things that the DPW can't do, or in addition to what the DPW is able to do. It's not uh, an excuse for the DPW to pack, uh, pedal back and not do things, but maybe these groups could perhaps be, work on invasive weeds that DPW can't have the time to do, or could do um, other such uh, things like that. So I think that's pretty much it on that. Um, okay. Now, do you want to proceed to the, sorry, questions there? Yeah, we're gonna, so if yes. it's okay, uh, yep. uh, we're gonna sure. talk about uh, feedback for you on both the semi-annual report and the yep. tool report. Yes. Because okay. I know in particular I have some comments on the tool report. Uh, Kevin, you're up first. So I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, thank you for an excellent mm -hmm. job as always. Uh, have, has our, your Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee met with the Lexington and the Bedford Advisory Committees? We do it some... I know you're saying we the Board of Selectmen should meet, but I bet you'd get it done quicker. We, and we, you're far more knowledgeable, I think, on the bikeway needs than we would be. Yes, we have, when we were in touch with them, uh, Peggy El, uh, Elders, is it? Peggy Anders. Uh, so in, Peggy Anders. Anders, sorry, in Lexington and um, the Je Terry. Thank you, Cherry, Terry Gleason, I believe, in Bedford. Okay. We're in fairly re, uh, frequent contact with them. We have had joint meetings every few, every year or so, but we haven't had them every year or so. We're probably due for one. We usually sit, select a town, and uh, I think it was here in Arlington a couple of years ago. Um, we haven't had one for a while. But again, it, this is, might be something that we would have one on. We've talked about having one um, on this subject. Thank you. Oh, I should have also added the map was, is part of a spin-off for this whole project that was um, instigated by the same time. Thank you. Steve got me next. Um, I... I really like what you're doing, especially on the regional issue, and I'm excited for the Friends of the Bikeway to get underway. Um, I'm looking at the uh, tool design report, Navigating the Miniman Commuter Bikeway, and I just have one quick comment that I, for the fourth bullet point at the bottom, I use the term police. And that, that's something I'd, I'd ask you to consider potentially changing to maybe educate or inform. Yeah, I think these are just um, some highlights I'd taken from Take a highlight. It. It's not the actual report. Okay. You already have copies of the actual report, and I think they might have used different wordage. In the actual report, they used the word ambassador. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes, I, I didn't, for some reason, ambassador didn't work as well for me, but, uh -huh. you know, there you go. Yeah. So. You see, ambassadors are here. Oh, yeah. Too. You're yeah. Right. Okay. All no, right. So I, just the word police stuck out to me, and I, I think that that can give kind of a false sense of, mm. you know, power that um, we yes, don't that want wasn't to run intended, into. Perhaps, yes. Mm. But uh, no, other than that, I, I really like uh, what you're doing, and I, I do support it. Thank you. Diane? Um, just a comment that sort of overlaps all three um, issues that we have before us. Um, I agree with Mr. Grilly. You are all the best. Um, people, ambassadors, et cetera, um, in terms of coordinating with the town manager, um, with our member communities around the issues and some of the uh, areas you highlight that you might want to move forward in the future. I just want to put before you all, and I, I mean this just in the spirit of, um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, this was the Rails to Trails program. Um, part of the reason we received as much federal and state funding, I'm told, by the then elected officials and Don Marquis, who the trail is named after, is that this is not, this is a multi-use multi path, a multi-use yes. trail. And I just want to make sure that um, I know when you all go for certain funding, we need to highlight bikeway improvements and 
um, but that there are many different kinds of commuters on, that this is a trail. Uh, and, and people have said that to me, that um, you know, sometimes they fail if they're pushing a stroller, you know, if they're walking to the Alwife. One percent of you know, people who are riding sometimes think you know, they're in the race over, you know, over in France or whatever. This is a trail for commuters, um, and I don't want to lose sight in that. I do want to highlight and make as many bikeway, bike path improvements, but I also want to make sure that we're not designing for the future that we're excluding that other larger audience. No, um, I don't think that's the intention. I think no, no, also no, the, the, si the signage that is envisaged would in fact mm -hmm. help mitigate some of this, would, you know, um, also, you know, sort of, uh, it's not very wide, so mm -hmm. walking two strollers abreast, sometimes when it's busy, is not helpful. You know, so cyclists going too fast when it's too busy is not helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, so walking dogs on leashes is not helpful. All these sorts of things, hopefully, we'll be able to get some sort of sign. But I'm just saying going forward, yeah. if somehow, maybe just in one sentence, there's a mention of that whole universe of people, commuters, pedestrians that use the bike path, the trail, what, whatever we want to call it. Yeah. So that I, I, I don't want people to be taken away with that, you know, we're not making trail improvements, as you stated, because we are. We're making trail improvements. We're not just making bikeway, bike path. So I just wanted to, you know, bring that point out. And I know Mike, the chairman has comments on the tool. I also have a comment on the draft proposed, but we haven't got to that yet. Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your work on this. This, this map is fantastic. <coughs> well, Le Lexington took the lead on that, so I must give him the credit for most wow. of that, and Joey here in the planning department. It's still fantastic the way it highlights a lot of the, um, the, the areas, the points of interest here. I hope you made a lot of, <coughs> a lot of copies. Of it. And I believe that were the, we had a sponsor. Who was the sponsor? Uh, printing company in Lexington. Who printed it for free, basically, so with their free copies. And uh, it's been made so it's more readily updatable than the last one was. Okay. So um, we should be able to go forward and change it if necessary. Well, that's great, because what, one, one thing that, that you'll be wanting to, to, to add here and then distribute the maps out of is the Visitor Information Center right on oh, the bike okay. line, right? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Uncle Sam, and I was, I was just looking at this, and this is really perfect for inclusion um, at that center when it opens, hopefully, next, next spring. Um, to be uh, fantastic. I had a couple of questions on um, the report. Um, you mentioned the uh, work you've done on the uh, guidelines around restriping and, and shadows and such. And I know we've received, you know, unsolicited praise for what has been done up in uh, Mass Ave and the recent yep. work. It's uh, fantastic. Um, what it says here is that um, lessons learned from this project will be incorporated into guidelines uh, going forward, um, and that you'd look at other parts of, of town as yes. well. Um, I'm thinking of one uh, example that just came my way in the last couple of weeks. Um, you may be familiar with some off-site improvements that have been done in conjunction with the, the Sims redevelopment to improve, you know, motorist travel. It's, it's traffic calming and, and pedestrian safety measures. We've heard some some uh, feedback from bicyclists. <coughs> that they're, they're feeling a little bit insecure there now with some of the, the narrowing of the physical space on the road. And I don't know what process you would take to, um, to, to look at something like that and um, potentially roll out. I'm or not would you take your lead from TAC? I'm not familiar from that. We'd probably take our lead partly from TAC. Yeah. Uh, we'd like maybe want to have some input, but Scott here is on TAC, so he would be able to um, he admirably represents us, uh, both, both committees. Um, there are issues often when you neck things down yeah. I, I can think of some, uh, and, uh, it's at Concord Ave in Cambridge, where there's a, a traffic calming measure which basically makes the road width of a car, so a cyclist in a car cannot physically fit right. in this very short period. And, I, I, and we're always a little bit dubious of that kind of activity uh, because it might be you know, hazardous for the cyclist and the car trying to squeeze, in it un, inadvertently getting too close to one another. Yeah. I think the, the area I'm thinking of... Um, the edge lines on the road were being used as de facto bike lanes, and, and they've pretty that much disappeared That was partially the intention, point, but so. the, the road surface, I believe, at the time we looked at wasn't wide enough to, to make them real bike lanes yeah. Uh, yeah. with a travel lane. With. Well, we'll look to but this, was, this part was the idea this would all be in these guidelines, and yeah. so they could be used in various places in town going forward. Well, you know, where there isn't room for bike lanes, there isn't room for them, but we should maybe have the sharrows yeah. to say that you know, the, this is a commonly biked route which there are some routes in town. Great, I'll, I'll look forward to that. Um, on the next um, 
steps. Um, as far as the three powers agreement, um, is there work that's actually concretely happening now to draft a memorandum of agreement for our boards? I, I envision this would probably be something like the Battle Road scenic process where all of the communities signed on to an MOU? No, I think that's a good thought. And I, I think the reason Christopher and Joey are here tonight is to really ask for the board's sort of support in starting to move in a direction of uh, pursuing a joint powers agreement. Uh, and actually, I just saw today a solicitation for the MAPC's district local technical assistance grants, which might be a well-timed opportunity to get some technical assistance to help work between the three communities to yeah. formulate a joint powers agreement. Well, after we take the vote to receive this report, should we take a vote to uh, direct you to, to pursue that further? Ex you know, express support of the board would yeah. be a positive thing. A support of the board. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. for. Oh, I just had one other, one other yes, question. Sure. This, I think, came to all members of the board, and it's not something I've thought much about. Um, we had a member of the community who, who wrote to us asking if illumination has ever been considered on any parts of the bikeway. What has, sorry? Uh, illumination. Whether illumination has been yes, considered. Yes, it has, and we, 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 we've uh, discussed this issue perhaps here, uh, or was it, um, I believe when it was built, it was specifically said there would be no illumination because of the abutters, and it was a way of getting it built. Mm -hmm. um, then to go back on that, you have issues. Um, however, there are areas where it is illuminated because it's in the, like, along Ro uh, Magnolia Field and down there because there's no real abutters, and it's heavily used late at night yeah. um, for safety reasons, so it, it makes some sense there. But other parts, I'm not exactly sure um, how that would go ahead. It would cost some money, obviously. Um, again, how the abutters would feel about that. If it were on timers, it might be something that would mitigate the, um, you know, if it went off at 11 o'clock after the last train arrived at Alewife, um, might be something. But I think it definitely, you know, having ridden it at night, there are issues. Uh, a lot of people wear black, walk their dogs, you don't see a darn thing. I might have a headlight on, or have headlights on my bicycles, but um, the other people don't, and they suddenly appear out of nowhere. Um, so it is an issue. Technically, the hours of a bikeway, it is closed as the same hour, uh, or open the same hours as the parks in town. Yeah. Again, for it was a number that was pulled out of, the, I believe, the thin air because somebody asked when it was opened. Uh, we had a town warrant on that, but it was shot down by the police yeah. because they liked the uh, ability to stop people being there for not trespass after hours. Okay. I can imagine it would be a very long and difficult discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, so th I hadn't expected uh, the your semi-annual report. I appreciate it. Oh, sorry. It, it, no, it's, it's fine. It's a lot of good work, and I really thank you for all the work that's there. I did come prepared with a series of comments on the tool report. Okay. So uh, go ahead. Well, here we go. First off, I think that the overall goal of the tool report of coordinating the three towns I think uh, is absolutely on target and I completely support it in particular the concepts of like making common signage and making common uh, materials for it and stuff like that I think that all of that is dead on and I completely uh, I think the reports do, doing the right thing uh, I was I'm definitely more I was not as I had a very cool reception of the concept of having a regional agreement which has essentially an annual fee from each of the towns um, and so I just wanted to consider one of, one of the things that Joe just mentioned was the uh, what we did for the scenic byways with the, a similar set not the same set but a similar set of towns is um, we created an administrative group committee that manages it all but we didn't actually we still left all the money with the individual towns and so we could, you know, that group could come up with the, what the signage plan is, and that could be approved. But then you you fund projects ad hoc, not out of, you know, a new body. So that my feedback, I would be, I'm delighted to support a tool-like concept, but I become very chilly when it has a. I think it's a concept, and we, you know, you can take bits of it you want and, and leave other and ones I'm, and, and I'm, adapt it. And I'm trying to share with you yeah. where my yeah. thoughts are, so that we can do that adaptation. Yes. Um, I like the idea of bike more bike racks. I just question the utility of the U-shaped ones that are actually in that report. I think I hate them but yes. because I think they you can't get enough. I know. I, I think I was going to say I think they're terrible, okay. and then I was going <laughs> to back off and say, <laughs> yeah, uh, because they just don't have enough. Right. Uh, you yeah. can't put enough bikes on them. Uh, so 
things in terms, so those were comments about like what the uh, group would do. In terms of what the town would do, and it talks about like obligating the towns to do um, plowing or root removal. And uh, I think that we as a town can and should do better about root damage. Like the work that we did at Spy Pond, I'm delighted we did it, but I wish we'd done it you know, a year and a half ago or two years yep. ago. On the other hand, the plowing, I support the fact that we plow, but I also know that in a future budget year, we may not be able to support it. And so I'm not ready to sign anything that says, <laughs> thou shalt plow going forward. So yeah, I think Lexington has a different attitude towards the plowing too. So um, yeah, OK. So that one's probably not going to be. Um, second to last comment was, I think it was similar to what uh, Diane said. When you look at who responded to the survey and who the surveys were from, it was a very bike-centric response rate. And I know that the report did go through significant lengths to talk about non-bike usages, but it still does come through as a bike report more than a, a Minuteman by, uh, path report. And I think that general acceptance and you know the, it, its path going forward is probably going to be more successful if it's a little uh, if, if we you know tweak yeah. that focus some, somewhat that might be something that the um, friends of group should yeah. they get going would take care of I mean and that I, was but actually we are a bike committee so we will be bike centric you know I, um, I completely I understand that. so yeah. I guess I wasn't so I completely you got the bike committee absolutely should be bike centric yep. but mm -hmm. in terms of the Minuteman report no oh, yes. I need yeah yep. okay mm -hmm. uh, and but I and I also the friends of Minuteman that was actually gonna be my last comment I hadn't thought about that I hadn't heard about it another yes. uh, home run totally we, had a, we had a gentleman at our last uh, meeting who was um, Lived in Austin, Texas. I th believe he's a he's a he now moved back to Arlington after many years yeah. and is very enthusiastic to um, drum up support and funds for. Um, he ran the parks, a uh, similar friends of parks in Austin. Yeah, it, and he wants we, to. We have similar, similar models that work really well in Arlington yes. for so, uh, Monotomy and Robbins, among others. So we're aware we, of those, and I think yeah, you we know, definitely can do that. It's by pond, of course. It's something we've debated for many years. Um, there is one in Lexington. It tends to be the same people as a bike committee. They just have this <laughs> one right after another. Yeah. Just, they don't even necessarily change their seats. So I really would like it to be different. Okay. Um, because I don't think necessarily we would bring anything new to the table. Okay. So uh, thank you. That, uh, that was my <coughs> feedback about having read it. And um, I must admit, I did not expect to get a heat map of the frequency of decorative plants across an 11 mile, and yet I did. <laughs> it was an exhaustive report, is the way I would describe it. Uh, so we don't actually have a motion on the table. Did Mr. Kuro make a motion to first move receipt of this? I move, I move receipt of the, um, of which we have a lot of reports here. Yeah. Let, uh, let me move receipt of the, uh, the yeah, okay, the tool report. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I move receipt of the uh, ABAC's um, semi-annual report dated December 2013. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I move um, uh, support of, of work towards the uh, drafting of a um, memorandum of understanding to be reached between um, uh, Bedford, Lexington, and Arlington uh, relative to a three powers agreement uh, subject to approval of the Board of Selectmen. Ultimate approval of this Board of Selectmen. Second. I very inelegantly hmm. phrase that. Would you accept an amendment of something along the lines of um, in the model of the scenic byway? Yes. Um, because and I'm specifically angling for a no money argument here. Yes. I don't. No, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's fine. Read my mind. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any further? I thought Stephen had no. Oh, did um, you know? no. Um, uh, yeah, I'd rather you second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Um, I, I do. Th I understand the no money clause. Yeah. At some point, money is necessary. I, I think. And uh, and on. Looking at, I understand, um, you know, not wanting to disperse town funding on a regional level, but I do think um, something like the bike path is better handled on a regional level. I think going forward, 
um, with these plans with all the communities um, that it runs through and impacts is uh, will make for an overall better bike path. So I, I'm, I am, I'm, or trail. And uh, so I'm a little more inclined to think positively on the regional level, mm -hmm. but um, no, I'll, I'll still support this. Yeah. Anything else, Joe? Yeah, I, and I would just say, I mean, in drafting it, I understand you're looking to, to not put us on the hook for um, you know, guaranteed appropriations going into the yeah. future, but but I think that I think we would agree that we would want any three powers organization to have the ability to apply for grant funding. Of as, course, as yes, yeah. No. yeah, absolutely. I and I think, so Steve, I, Steve, I think your point is really well taken. But and uh, I'm not opposed to spending the money, and I think, that, but I'm. I guess I like a model in my head more with a case. It's made on a case by case basis than it is on a general budgetary gotcha. authority, and so that's where that's what that makes that's sense. what made me twitch was that was the creating this budgetary authority. It's like I mean, yeah, it's no, I understand. Okay, um, further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Okay. Last but not least. We have a proposal for guidelines for event use of the Minuteman Trail. Uh, Adam, did you? Yeah, so if you don't mind, thank you very briefly. Uh, so this came up some time ago in discussions that I was having with Joey Glishko of the planning department. I know discussions she was having with ABAC and with Christopher. And, and I think from, from both sides, there was an awareness that there was a growing amount of special events that were being requested to occur on the, bike, uh, on the bikeway on the Minuteman Trail. And, um, Though, you know, our town departments would individually manage them, it, it seemed to start becoming a bit unwieldy about where to direct people, and there was no formal process for it. Uh, so I had asked Joey to work with ABAC to draft a policy, which is the policy before you tonight. Uh, before we implement the policy, uh, we obviously wanted it to come before the board, take any feedback, any comments, um, any suggestions the board might have before we finalize it and actually implement it. Um, you can see the goal really is to just <clears throat> create a formal permitting process uh, through the town manager's office, uh, has notice in advance, it has certain <coughs> permit fees based on the number of people that would be participating. Uh, it has, uh, it, it doesn't preclude further uh, approvals coming from either this board, Parks and Rec, DPW, Police and Fire, uh, Public Safety. Uh, and, it, and it really just, it, it tries to manage 5Ks, other you know, longer, shorter races, walks, maybe a charity bike event. Uh, different special events that aren't just your normal commuting or recreational use by a biker, a walker, someone with a stroller, a runner, wh whatever it might be. Uh, so I'm happy and I want to thank Christopher and Joey and the committee for their work on it and we're happy to take your comments, feedback and suggestions on the, the policy. Diane. Um, thank you and I raised my hand first only because um, I want to make my comments on this and I support it, the policy. Um, I'm just tonight's the first night that I have a different family situation home, something very minor, so I'm going to have to leave it. Nothing bad, it's just, um, but, um, and I did have a brief conversation with the manager on this. It's my understanding right now that in terms of people using um, the Minuteman Trail, the Minuteman Bikeway, that ultimately, um, and I use the case in point with uh, the athletic director, Dugalecki, that the selectmen, since it's a public thoroughfare, that we, um, uh, the body that votes permission or not, or is it the town manager? Town council has advised me that the actual rail trail mm -hmm. is the authority of the town manager. That's fine. Abutting lands are the board of selectmen. Right. Okay. I, I, for what it's worth. Right. <laughs> so land abutting that is park and run. Well, no, no, no. The only reason I say that is when we had um, the athletic director come before us, I was advised by the then town council. I don't know if you also advised me that we needed it. I said, why don't we just have the town manager, but because of liability, say. Using public ways, though, roads. Okay. All right. Well, you, you can work that out. I, but I, I do want to maintain whatever authority that we have um, towards any of these events. Um, my thing is, if we didn't need to have that meeting in 48 hours, I was just told that we play a role in it. So, um, so my comments on this would be, again, um, and it's already incorporated in here, so Christopher read my mind. It's identified as a trail and a bikeway. Um, happy with that. Um, 
just to, since this is a stepping for, forth point, I'm assuming comments will be taken tonight and you'll present yeah, a final no, draft. Yeah. Um, it's up to you since it's, it's your, um, you as the town manager, but do you want to have an age requirement for per, the permit requester? Um, this is just the court reporter crap. Um, so I don't know if that would, I shouldn't say crap, court, court reporter in me. I don't know if that would be included in, in number one. Um, I'll leave it to my colleagues under number two in terms of charging the fee. I assume it, if that's what we do, um, that it would go to general fund or perhaps it goes to um, maintenance of the bikeway, the trail. Um, I'll leave that again. I assume that's your purview to do that. We'd have to go to general fund. Um, under number three, I just put forth since we have a uh, completion time of 9 8 p.m. Do we want to put a no earlier than a start time in there? Um, and then um, the only other thing I would ask, I'm sorry, I skipped over it. And number two, again, case in point with the um, Arlington Public School fundraiser that they have, um, can we not make it a hard, unless you want to, because it's your jurisdiction, a hard and fast rule that, that it has to be at least 45 working days prior to the event, excluding any extenuating circumstances or something like that, so that if we're presented with what we were presented with before by the athletic director, that it's not a hard and fast rule. I think 45 working days is a pretty reasonable time frame to be able to plan and ask departments to do the No, no, I do too, but if that would have precluded, I'm just thinking of what we just went through um, with the road race from the schools. I'd, I'd rather consider some language that would allow the town manager to make exceptions to the policy based on circumstances. Here's, here's my as, yeah, as opposed yeah. to softening that part. You know what, yeah, what I'm saying is if you feel, if you don't need language in there that says I'm not bound by that 45 day, if once in every 10 years, yeah. something like that comes along. I'm just saying just from the legal side of it, do you want to put, and I'll leave it to you. If you put it in, fine. If you don't, I'm not going to lose any sleep. If you want to put something in there that gives you the room to sort of override that 45-day requirement. I agree that you should have at least 45 days notice, you know, especially with events like that. Um, and the only other thing is, and I've heard this from um, user groups and bicyclists um, who have said, um, just on the larger road races, I don't know if you want to make a policy that similar to what we do for the town day road race, that if you're going to have an event that's a certain amount, a certain number, it has to start, you know, like ideally town day, I think we start at seven in the morning, 8.30, but the event's over, you know, Saturday morning. Um, do we want to say, you know, events like that are Saturday and Sunday mornings only? Because that's what I've heard, because it's then when, you know, during the week, the bike path is used a lot by commuters. But do you think item four covers that or no? In general, special event, events with blah, 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 like, so basically says don't do it during peak usage. Right, but it also, it, it, it lets you go in during the weekdays. I, I just leave it to the town manager. If you want to offer the bike path um, during non-peak usage during the weekday. I mean, sometimes the, the usage at commuting hours is, is high, but during the rest of the day, during the week, it's fairly low. Mm -hmm. And at the weekends, it's pretty high after you on Saturday all day long mm -hmm. and Sunday after a certain time so you know it's um, mm -hmm. well I'll leave it for you all yeah. I just know that yeah. this year we were bound by the event that the schools had scheduled they had already printed everything starting a road race to go onto the bike path thankfully there were only 50 that started at 10 o'clock on um, a Sunday morning really should have been started 7:38 in the morning you know because you know the bike bike break is really used then. So again, I apologize. I just wanted to put those in. Yeah. Um, whatever no, you incorporate, that's fine. And this will not happen at the next meeting. It's just the first night. And sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Have a good night. Yes. Uh, further discussion? Joe? Yeah, just a quick question on number eight. Um, given what you just told us, Mr. Manager, um, reg regarding the, the jurisdiction of manager versus the board of selectmen on the uh, abutting lands, does that have to come to us? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good catch. It. You're right. Yeah. yeah. OK, thanks. Kevin, I skipped you. I apologize. No, 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 that's OK. Um, so uh, I am a little surprised that this uh, comes under the town manager, to be honest. I mean, especially a policy related to usage. Uh, I, I, frankly, I, I was surprised when town council and uh, yeah, well, what idiot that. told you that might I ask is he sitting to your left at this <laughs> moment <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> but but so on these do we have to approve these or you're just you're just telling us this is what you're doing 
Um, you want us to just receive it? Uh, really more of the latter. Um, okay. and, and I think as part of the policy, we would still be letting the board know of any events. You know, that would be going on. And frankly, most bigger events are going to use bikeway and roadway, so there's going to be a lot of overlap between mm -hmm. authorities anyways. That's what I was going to ask. If we assume we're at the end of this year, and we're not quite, right? We're, yeah. we're, but let's say we are at the end of December. How many events this past year, 2013, would have come under these guidelines? How many different events were there? Marie, you know? I would say probably if we weren't in the high school, I would say at least five. I was going to say six, yeah. And but I think but there's how many are specifically just the bikeway, not using public roads? Bike, this was a bikeway. Some of the, but the high school used the path of the public way. Right. So yeah. I'm saying which one's just on the bikeway? Maybe two or three. There is such a thing. I'm, that's what I, I don't think there is such a mm -hmm. thing as only a bikeway event. That's what I'm asking. Is anybody familiar with? Oh, I, there definitely was. I, there was. I know there was one. Uh, actually, it might have been the event that. Like with the bike, your bike the, safety thing, would that be considered a? I'm sorry I said it that way, Chris. But oh, you, I know exactly. You what know you mean. what I mean? Um, when we can bring a bike down, you check, and you're right on the path no. there. And well, that might be numbers because you know we might be below the numbers that are involved in. Yeah, you didn't have 26 or yeah, something. No, yeah, no, it was like five of us and yeah. whoever stopped by, so it wasn't really. But no. I think you were talking the event. There was a breast cancer walk, I believe. That they gave no notice. They just came through, oh. and they just plugged the place up for hours. And mm -hmm. nobody knew about it. And that there was another event that I remember specifically, because I remember it being the impetus for me to start talking with Joey. Uh, there was a group of, um, I think they, it was a, an alumni group who wanted to do an alumni event. They wanted to do a race specifically on the bike path. Right. And when that request came in is what really brought up the, oh, we don't, we, we don't, have, we don't have a way to say yes, no, or how, or how to manage it. And that's really, that, that was the impetus for this. Okay. And, and I, do, I do think, with its popularity, um, with, with continually uh, changing demographics in this area, I think we're going to see more and more requests, and that's another reason why we're talking about this now. It should also be mentioned that um, these are very similar to the guidelines uh, from Lexington, which uh, helped us draw up these. Uh, Lexington has very similar guidelines, and I think it's something in the tool report too that they should be usage guidelines, so this is a step towards that direction. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it just, I couldn't think of what a bike you know, what a Donald R. Marquis Trail event would be that wouldn't cross a public road. Uh, you know, so anyhow, that's all. So I, I, I move receipt. Uh, Second. In, Second. In this case. You know, we have been talking heavily about bikes, but rightly so, the Minuteman Commuter Bikeway, and as you say that, this is under your purview as well. And it is recognized, this is called the Donald R. Marquis Minuteman Trail here in Arlington. But the last few times, I am always amazed, and I would say myself, this is an informal, the walkers are at least three to one to bicyclists. Yeah. And if, indeed, 2,000 of them are going through there on a, on a weekend day, that's 6,000 walkers, although I would imagine the com walking commuters are more during the week. So if it's 1,000 bikes during the week, you know, that's 3,000, that's 4,000 people on that trail. Yeah. Uh, every day. I mean, it's. it's uh, we, we do have the numbers. I don't have them in my head, but um, we, we've collected the numbers and we do break them down into pedestrians, joggers, which we count separately, uh, people in strollers and bikes yeah. and rollerbladers. So they do periodic hard checks, like by hour by hour. So we know. It's, it's, we it's know. every, every we, we count every quarter from about um, seven till seven. On but is it accurate that, that walkers yeah. far outnumber bikers? No, it, it varies. No, it varies. All right, okay. Sorry, right. Scott, Scott, <laughs> uh, you, can I yield to Scott, please? Uh, sorry, Scott. Hi, Scott Smith, uh, TAC and ABAC. Um, <coughs> when we've done counts of people passing a particular point, the, the ones I recall, it's roughly equal numbers. But but the walkers are using it for a greater amount of time for a given mileage covered. So if you're looking at time that they're on there, you'll see more walkers. But you know, people passing a point, it's about equal. We'll well, that, that morning, yeah. my, my campaign, the, yeah. the number of, the, I would say the number of walkers has significantly increased near Alwife. 
Yeah. Even though around that wife, there's a thousand bikes parked there every day. Uh, or, or yeah, yeah, at our wife, it's mostly walkers, yeah, definitely. I've kind of done yeah. it one place. So uh, right. a lot of East Arlington falls out and walks down the trail to Alewife. So yeah, right. that, that is the higher. But it, to me, you know, who first served here in 1989, you can't believe the number of neighbors that came before us and begged us not to build this bike path, this trail, uh, that it would decrease the value of their properties, that crime would increase and all of this. I mean, and Aren't they sorry they sold their homes, you know, because I think every single home along that bike path has increased in value. But anyhow, sorry. Excuse me. So my only comment, I like the guidelines in general. Uh, I also like where I, I actually prefer the elements where you're writing yourself leeway because I really do think that yeah. good judgment is no substitute oh, for smart yeah. uh, rules. So um, I definitely support continuing uh, flexibility. Steve? Um, I, you know, I support it as well. Uh, one thing for its implementation, I just, and I'm sure that you thought this, I just hope that it is, um, you know, put out there pretty publicly. Um, pr not, not really, you know, not, obviously I don't mean the text message notification, <laughs> but, you know, just make it visible so no one uh, runs into that 45-day deadline. Yep. Thank you. Any further discussion? We have a motion to receive. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Our tenth item is a request of removal 15-minute parking sign at 1317 Mass Ave. Uh, Chuck Pappas, Swifty Printing. Mr. Pappas, welcome. Thank you. Uh, as we've mentioned before, we wanted to remove that sign that's in front of the florists. It's become an issue since they increased the size of the bus stop and we've lost the one, one and a half to two parking spots. I uh, went ahead and passed out a survey so you'd make sure that all the business owners up there were aware that it was requested. It was originally requested to me by Mimi who owns the Classic Cafe. I had this filled out and she went around. Uh, I was only gonna survey just the people on that side because 15 minutes would really affect just them because it'd take you 15 minutes to get across the Ave sometimes. Uh, she went ahead and, and did everybody. Other than there's a vacant store and a new hairdresser who moved up there to my salon which is closed on Mondays. She wasn't able to get them but they've all checked off the box yes. As you can see from the back side, they were urged <laughs> to drop it off. Uh, who take that? So can I just ask, that specifically includes the florist? Yes. Okay. Specifically includes the florist. It specifically includes, she's uh, checked off and initialed. And um, Capri Pizza also, who checked off yes and initialed. Because those were the two that originally requested it at that spot. Even Sammy D'Agostino's <laughs> uh, checked it off. Okay, so we also do have a recommendation from Corey Rateau to not support it. And he was particularly, he says, uh, the two, it talks about the history about 2008 and the two established being currently uh, in business. If I can answer to that too. Yep. I, I spoke to Corey when he was in the other day and needed some rush signs about that. And we didn't get to finish our conversation, but he did mention the fact that it was specifically brought there for the pizza and the florist mm -hmm. shop. And I said to him, I said, I've got a signature from everybody who's there, including the people who originally did it. Um, his, some of his concern, too, was the cost of the ticket in the park in the uh, bus station is so high. Uh, he, he feels he was trying to help the businesses but not have it. In this case, the businesses are the ones who have asked for it. Uh, and uh, things have changed because of the, the new uh, bus stops. So at that time... Uh, going back even further, when they asked for the 15-minute, it was another situation where we were losing parking spots because of the redesign of the heights. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was granted there. And it, um, if the business is requesting it, I'm sure we'll be the first to hear if it's a failure. But it's, if everybody in that block on both sides is asking for it, I might have to disagree a little bit with Corey this time. Discussion? Motion? I, I'm sorry, I'm unclear, Chuck, what you're asking. What are you specifically asking for? To remove the, the one spot that's marked 15 minutes only. Okay. Uh, it kind of used to be in front, correct me if I'm wrong, it used to be in front of 
uh, the florist. Right. But now that we've extended, or you know, now that the bus thing uh, right, the right. stage are larger, the 15 minute slot slid a, uh, towards D'Agostino's one, oh. and so now it's in front of uh, Classic Cafe. And so the request is is to change that from 15 minute to two hour is what the uh, correct default would be. Right. And then there will be no 15 minute space anywhere. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it also gives the illusion too, because of how it was moved and how few spots are left, that it kind of looks also that there's two to almost three spots that are 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, right. So I mean, the compromise would have been if, if I had anybody on the list who was against it, my second recommendation would have compromised and to be sure to post a sign that it's only one spot. But um, I was surprised myself that the people that I thought who wouldn't want it, which were both the florist and the pizza place, um, both were for it. They had the option to yes, no, and I don't care. And there were no I don't cares. Hmm. So, uh, I, I was, I'm not seeing anyone jumping up, so I'm going to speak unless anyone. Yeah, go for it. Uh, uh, I had come here tonight prepared to follow Corey's recommendation because of the, the why it was done in the first place, well, obviously, which was before my time on the board. But given if we, the florist is saying, nope, I don't want it anymore, I'm, I'm ready to go along with that, and I have no problems with changing it. Personally, that would be my thought. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm inclined in the same way. Do you want to make? Well, I, I hate. I hate to be the one to make another motion to go against one of the, <laughs> the recommendations <laughs> tonight. <laughs> um, but I, I will. I will move to support the uh, removal of, of the 15-minute parking sign. Is there a second? Um, I'll, I'll second it. Um, pending, can we potentially maybe have someone in our office call? the florist and Capri just to confirm and make yeah. sure they're okay with it before any signs go up. Um, you know, because it doesn't, well, well, I of course trust Mr. Pappas, I, I would have, you know, preferred to hear it from them. I think that the way to do that then, if you, is to put up a competing motion to table and, and say that we need to collect that information. Yeah. Yeah. Clark was in today. Could I just ask if uh, Mr. Kira would be willing that we uh, revisit it in six months, that we support the removal, and then let's just, you know, that's fine. I think ask that's Corey to keep his eye on it if, to you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. And yeah. I think that's completely appropriate because if, if I'm not mistaken, there's still efforts underway to try to convince <coughs> the state to, uh, to give a little leeway on those bus stops. Is that? The, yeah, that's correct. I think the, the town also is checking the plans against what was painted, and yeah. we're waiting for some of that information back, too. You but actually, been. I support that six months because sometimes people ask for something, they're not always sure what the result is. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a yeah. good idea. I think that makes complete sense. Okay. Mm. Especially given that, you know, there's a vacancy there. So you're okay uh, with that? Yeah, okay. that sounds good uh, to me. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks. If I could take yes. one more minute, uh, going back to the first lights, when this came up, we were actually talking about the uh, no parking up there in certain areas. That ended up getting tabled, but I kept, kept it open because I myself were asking if we can put up some no parking signs during the event and prior to, just prior to the event in front of my business, um, only because I need those parking spots. I brought these for Marie, actually. But. Um, Santa needs a little parking spot <laughs> and if people bring in the petting zoo need a, a little parking spot because they need to keep their equipment close to um, the animals and where they're having it which is in my parking lot so I can't take them off the street okay uh, yeah I'll have to forget I remember I was here and I yet I don't remember we literally just tabled the question at the time and so you're asking us to reserve two spaces in front of your Essentially, making the temporary reserve spaces. Te yeah, te technically, I think we have three in front, but yeah. 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 He was here before. He wanted to have the parking restricted from Brigham down to right. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing away with that now, and all he wants is just in front of the business because he's having the parking lot with Santa to like Rex. Yeah. 
Correct. At the time, we hadn't fixed the plans yet, and so we were keeping it open, thinking that some people up at that end needed more space, and yeah. um, our committee uh, up there has decided against that. How many hours are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for the, the, during the whole event. Which is? At 12 oh, to 5, and I need it st you know, blocked off by 11, just so the cars aren't there during that time. Because what's happening, these three items are happening in stages. Mm -hmm. So the first vehicle is going to need, we need more space for the, the first two, actually. Yeah. And then they need space to clear and get out. Kevin. So I move that from 11 to 5 on December 7th, we allow three spaces. Is it three, to Char yeah, Chuck, I, Chuck, excuse me, Charlie, um, uh, be reserved uh, for that period of time, if that's the right way to say it. Yeah, second. Second. Yeah, and uh, thanks so very much for your... marking it off, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and thanks for the leadership on this, Chuck, as well. I know uh, you're putting quite a lot of effort in. I think it's going to be a good event. Thank you. Well, I have to give the credit to the chamber who started it. Other, other have just been organizing the, the heights to try and get them going. Did you know that the select tones actually sang a Sharper's Wonderland song tonight for a commercial for First Lights, Chuck? No, I did not. Well, listen, <laughs> yes. you missed out. <laughs> Most of the people up here were... Uh, there are people tingling with excitement to see yes. this commercial coming out this week. But I am greatly disappointed that I missed it. <laughs> you were not disappointed that I missed it, however. <laughs> uh, all right, we have a motion, we have a second. Any comments, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 4-0, four, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, for approval, TAC, Russell Place Report. Uh, we have a written report for um, the TAC. They reviewed, so we referred to them um, a study of Russell Place specifically related to traffic volume, anticipated traffic volume from the Alta development, uh, which is AKA the former Brigham's. Um, and they looked at it and they evaluated it and they recommended that there is, that there be no action. And uh, Marie has told me that she's followed up with the original requester and, uh, you know, it, who obviously could be here to talk to us about it. But I think that the basic message was the impact is not sufficient to warrant any changes. I move receipt. Well, Second. Any further discussion? Um, no, is it just receipt or is it for? Well, it says no action. Oh, it's no action. We yeah. have nothing to do. Yeah, no okay. Action. Yeah. That sounds good. Then. All those means basically we maintain status quo. Yeah. Gotcha. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next up, uh, are the human rights. Uh, uh, what is it? no? Human is it the human rights? Human rights commission's response coordination team. Thank you. Um, well, well put. Yes. Uh, Joe, you brought this up at our last meeting. Um, we asked for volunteers, and you volunteered, and Steve volunteered, and Steve. And you were ready to let it go, so are we put, we're putting Steve's name forward. I move. I move to uh, appoint uh, uh, Stephen Byrne as uh, the selectman's liaison to the uh, Human Rights Commission's response coordination team. Uh, I'm looking through my packet, and I don't see like a curriculum detail <laughs> <laughs> for this gentleman, whom I love you know, and support 100 uh -huh. percent. Is that a second? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, I'm on the side. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we have a motion second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I won't let you down. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Special town meeting. Uh, I guess we have two votes, which I didn't think about. Thank you. All right, and so I had some questions and I asked this to be tabled. And um, in particular, I'd ask for, you know, why are we doing this so early? Because I thought that maybe we could benefit from doing it late. And it was explained to me, thank you, about why it is we're doing it on the date. So we're doing it because, in particular, uh, we have to mail out the warrant. And in order to save on mailing costs, we piggyback on the advocate doing their all town advocate delivery which means we've got a printer deadline of March 6th, which is what backs us out to a, the warrant being open on February 11th. So I, th which, so I would personally, my questions that I raised two weeks ago, I'm, I'm satisfied. So I think it would be good unless if there's any uh, motion to 
set a special town meeting for April 30th. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Adam, anything? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? 4-0. And the next is a vote is to open the warrant for special town meeting. Uh, <coughs> the warrant will open on Tuesday, February 11th at 8 a.m. and will remain open until 4 p.m. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Next up, we have correspondence received. Uh, I think we can just, I guess in particular, uh, the Carewell Urgent Care Center. Uh, I had a number of questions on that one, and so I guess I would ask that the board, uh, my intent is to put that up on a future meeting uh, for actual discussion, because I have real concerns about where their actual entrance is and how, what the current handicapped availability is and what we're going to lose any spaces and stuff like that. But is that we're referring this to TAC or you want to answer these before we refer to TAC? I actually, because it's parking only, I actually think the memo itself is, is incorrect. I think that we it shouldn't go to TAC okay. because okay. it's a TAC is when things are moving okay. and when things are so, not moving, that's us. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, oh. in this oh, case, apropos, isn't it? We case, get the not moving stuff. In yeah. this case, we're talking about immobile objects, so I think yeah. that that's uh, that's just us. And so, uh, and just so the board knows what I was, uh, so I'm particularly, I want to know what this, the memo talks about. The State Department of Health asking says you should request these two things. Is that just some like thing that they send out every time you should ask for these things, or did they look at this and evaluate and say that you actually need these things? And looking at the actual space that they're going into, they're not going into Unleashed, they're not going into Hair Cuttery, they're going to the one that's next to that. And they're talking, evidently, as I understand it, they're not using the door on the front. So why would you put a drop-off on the front if you're not actually using the door on the front? You're, the drop-off area is in the back, and that's mm. private property, so why would we do it? Mm. And also, because there's the assisted living across the street, we already have some handicapped parking in that particular area. And I want, you know, especially considering, you know, we've been talking about how the park, we lost three spots in the Heights earlier this year. I'm, there's a, so I'm asking the, for, to look at what our inventory is of handicapped spaces, what is in the private lot. For all of these reasons, I want us to discuss this in its own right. Okay, so I move, we put this on an agenda, and, and we get you the information you're asking for by the time of that, so. Second. Um, do you want it the next meeting, Dan? Do you I, I think to, just, let's just see how, but I think it okay. probably will be, but let's just okay. go with that. All right. Forthwith. All right. Yeah, forthwith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, okay, so that disposes of that one. The sidewalk on Quincy Street, I wanted to refer that to the tree committee. Just to, I don't necessarily expect them to have a strong response, but I think it's healthy for the, uh, frankly, I, I think it's good for us to be, if they're going to be our advisors and advocates about tree policy, they need to talk up here about the good things and the bad things, and this was one where a tree was a bad thing. Adam, did you have a, anything else you wanted to weigh in on that, or was that sufficient? I think that's sufficient. Okay. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, and I think the rest of it is just move receipt, unless there's something that I have overlooked. Okay. On the last one on the parking, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, last one on the parking. So, we have a gentleman who is a emergency responder. Uh, he's an emergency worker. He's an EMT. He shares his um, is it, uh, roommate also as a uh, paramedic, and he was looking for an exemption for public safety workers from the overnight parking. Uh, thank you for reminding me, Marie. And I read it and I thought about it myself, and I just said, uh, I think that the whole question last year was quite clear that our overnight parking plan, plan is, a, is supported by the people who live in town. And if he wants, I think that if he wants that to happen, I think he needs to, you know, start a grassroots revolution that converts everyone's opinion on how overnight parking in Arlington works. So I think, I, so I was going to say I mean, we could refer this to uh, Corey, but I don't even feel, personally, I don't think. I don't think I need Corey to tell me what the voters said last month, last year. But uh, if anyone else had a different opinion, mm -hmm. this would be the time to say that. <laughs> Marie, was that sufficient? Was that what you're, okay. Mm. I agree with you. All right, so I think we've got three items to just move receipt. Move receipt. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. New business? Marie. What? We are electing a state a, uh, uh, representative in Congress on December 10th. What time are the polls open? 7 o'clock to 8 at night. 7 o'clock to 8 at night. And we have three candidates on the ballot and a write-in slot. You can. <laughs> I know that too, you don't, yeah, it makes your night longer, but you can. <laughs> is that you announcing a write-in campaign? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> That's right. Daniel. <laughs> uh, anything else? That's all I have to say. Esteemed Town Council. I have nothing here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Adam. Well, I want to wish Ed well in his last meeting before the board as Town Council. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, just a brief piece of new business. Um, I know the board uh, had a designated uh, Mr. Greeley to be their representative in uh, terms of dealing with an e-packet solution. However, Adam Kurowski, the new systems analyst, uh, would like an opportunity to come before the board uh, prior to a board's meeting, have it be part of a posted meeting, but uh, come and you know, do some give and take and have a discussion with the board. Uh, so I'd like to ask that the board consider that we start uh, perhaps an hour early on January 13th, or the, the regularly scheduled January 13th meeting, start at 6, 6.15, uh, have Adam Kurowski come and have a discussion with the board. Uh, there's a, pa uh, a document provided to the board tonight uh, which sort of lays out the process that Adam is using uh, to go about analyzing uh, an e-packet uh, or e-document system for the board. So if you want to review that, give me any feedback prior to that meeting uh, or let me know if the 13th doesn't work. Uh, that would be great, but otherwise we'll plan on moving forward with the 13th. And that's so, all I have for new business. Thank you. Kevin? Yes, I just have a couple things for departing council. Um, Mr. Marlinga, of the five members of this board in the meetings you've been here, which are you most impressed with um, in these meetings so far? There's, there can be no doubt, can there be? Well, I'm, I'm just asking. I'll just leave that to your discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I have an assignment. Would you please look into whatever ridiculous council made the ruling the manager is more powerful than the Board of Selectmen when it comes to the Minuteman Trail. I mean, which other ridiculous council? Is that yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, no, just uh, that uh, we did do this commercial for First Lights, but I'm going to leave. Joe did a beautiful uh, uh, speak over the select tone singing, and I'll let him deal with that and ask people, uh, invite people more to First Lights. But uh, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Joe. Sure. Um, I guess that really is the only piece of business I have. Uh, this Saturday, December 7th, uh, from 12 o'clock to 5 p.m., uh, uh, we have a shop local event that the Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring, but uh, in cooperation with a lot of local organizations, uh, businesses. Uh, I know the town has cooperated as well in, in uh, staging this. Uh, there will be events going on in uh, all through the major uh, business districts, Capitol Square, the Center, and uh, in the Heights, um, including at uh, 4.30, there will be um, uh, tree lightings and special events uh, in those, in those um, areas with some of our local musical talent will be, um, uh, will be uh, singing some from the, from the schools, from uh, Arlington Children's Theater, uh, and other representatives of uh, uh, arts groups, um, and uh, some other uh, special surprises, but there will be a lot of uh, special events. And you know, I think Mr. Pappas already mentioned uh, one, one of them up at uh, Swifty in, in the Heights. It'll be a great family family friendly uh, day, and uh, we urge everybody to come on out. If I may just add to that, free parking in the Russell Common lot. Yes, uh, and there are shuttles that will move yes. people from there to the Heights in the east. So just Very important. There are two sh two shuttles will be will be running and. Um, uh, at, at all times during during those those hours, and there will be uh, designated stops for folks to get on and uh, and off. Cool. Thank you, Joe. Steve. Uh, no new business, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just had uh, one item, which was really brief, which is that the we as a board said that we would review executive session minutes every six months. And we're due up for that, so I'm planning on scheduling an executive session at uh, our meeting in two weeks, which I don't anticipate will be too long because basically it's just going to be us approving minutes and deciding which minutes we can release and which ones we can't. 
Uh, so that means we'll have like a confidential part of the packet that comes in two weeks, and uh, then we'll we'll do that vote at that point. That was the only thing I had. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.